Nice to meet you, Sophia. I think it's going to be a short relationship, but pleased to meet you. Sophia, don't ignore me. Richard's wife. Hey. Oh, are you Richard's friend? I'm sorry, he never told me about you. Are you from the company? I'm terribly sorry. Not at all. It's okay. But I'm not his friend. Girlfriend. Huh? Girlfriend? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're talking about. You don't understand? Girlfriend? Well, what do you mean by girlfriend? A girlfriend is a girlfriend. I'm dating Richard. I'm getting frustrated with your lack of understanding. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. You know I'm his wife. Obviously. I don't think you're the one to lose your temper here. Can you explain to me what a mistress has to do with the wife? You're saying pretty terrible things. Okay, I'll explain. I was fooled by him at first. Every time I see him, he tells me he loves me, that I am the only one. He even asked me to marry him. I didn't know my favourite Richard had a wife. But he doesn't see me on weekends, even if I ask. It's the same for Christmas and New Year's holidays. Then you finally realised he's married? Yes, when I asked him, he said he had a wife named Sophia. And you didn't feel sorry for yourself and think about breaking up with him? Huh? How could I think that? You guys should break up. Richard loves me. He tells me that every time we see each other. You poor thing. Huh? He says the same line to me. Maybe he's telling other women too. What? Anyway, you divorce Richard. No. I just got married to Richard. I'm not going to divorce him just because you told me to. Huh. You're so sure of yourself. How long have you guys been dating? It's been almost a year. I'm thinking of getting him to divorce his wife as a gift for our first anniversary. I married him about a year ago. Do you really want to marry a man who, at the same time, is having an affair with another woman? Huh. What a sore loser. If you get married and get cheated on at the same time, it's because you're not attractive. You're frustrated because he cheated on you with a younger woman. Richard doesn't love you. It's ugly that an unloved old woman would cling to a man. Break up now. Oh my goodness, you're just saying what you want to say. Well, I'm counting on it. Hey, Sophia. What do you mean you're not divorced yet? Hey, answer me. So annoying. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What are you talking about? I told you to divorce him. Why haven't you? I said it before, didn't I? I'm newly married, and I can't divorce that easily. Are you stupid? Hey, who's stupid? Richard says he's getting divorced. You just don't want to get divorced. I told you not to cling to him so miserably. I never hear from Richard about wanting a divorce. Anyway, the wedding is in a month, and your fussing isn't going to get us a divorce. Huh? Wedding? What's that? A wedding in a month? Yes, that's right. It's almost ready, so I can't divorce now. If you get it, please just give up. Rest assured, the wedding will be between me and Richard. He and I searched the venue together, consulted with the wedding planner and booked the wedding. You are so brazen to have a wedding instead. Don't worry about it. You can get divorced without worrying about anything. You're the one who's giving up. You... Come on. Cut me some slack. Just because you're registered with him, don't get so high and mighty. Even if you don't get divorced, I'll still be with Richard. I'm being kind telling you that. 
A couple that's just a formality won't last long. You should break up with him right away for your sake. Yes, thank you for your advice. I don't need advice from my husband's cheating partner. Don't contact me again. How dare you? Hey, listen. Hey, Sophia. What are you doing keeping me waiting for a week? I told you to divorce him right away, didn't I? Oh, I told you not to contact me again, right? I don't want to contact you either. It's because you're so lazy. How long are you going to keep me waiting? Right now, Richard and I are talking about you and about the divorce. It's not that easy to come to a conclusion. When to divorce is our business, not yours. You stay out of it. I'm involved too. Richard is getting divorced for me. If you don't divorce him, I can't marry Richard. It's annoying. Annoying? How could you say that? Anyway, stay out of the married couple's discussion. If you want to get married, wait until the divorce is finalised. Married couple's discussions. You just want to say married couple. What are you two married couples? Your relationship has been cold from the very beginning. Enough. I'll force you to divorce him. You can't force that, can you? I didn't mean to go this far. It's your fault. Because you're not going to divorce him. I'm pregnant with Richard's child. Do you want to marry him for such a lie? It's not a lie. Don't you feel sorry for the child not having a father? Are you really pregnant? Well, I found out yesterday that I am pregnant with his baby. I'm happy. How about you? You don't have children and you aren't pregnant. Wrong? Well, I don't have children. Did you hear that from Richard? You know that my baby and I need him more than you do, right? I just heard about the wedding from Richard. He said the ceremony is going to be just the two of you with no guests. Lovely. Now do you understand? I need Richard and the wedding, not you. Oh, I hope you just give it to me. All you have to do is get divorced. It's that simple, right? Yes, that might be good. I'll give it to you. Richard and the wedding. Really? Seriously? I'm so happy. You're not going to say you change your mind, will you? I'm tired of talking to you. I have no lingering feelings for someone who would have an affair from the beginning of our marriage. Really? Really? Not only him, but also the wedding? Seriously? Supreme! Generous! Thank you, Sophia. I'm impressed. I promise. I'll be happy for you. Yes, have a healthy baby and a happy family. Good luck. I'm rooting for you too. I'm sorry for being so harsh. You're kind and nice. Not really. If he has a baby, he might change his mind. Morning, Sophia. Sophia. Don't ignore me. You're making a lot of noise. What do you want? Do you remember what day it is? Today? I don't know. Oh my God. You do remember, don't you? It's me and Richard's wedding day. Oh, it was today. It's been a month since then. It's fast. Are you preparing for the wedding right now? Yes. This is a great wedding venue. The costumes are perfect and the atmosphere is great. Richard decided on this place? Or you? I mostly made the decision, but Richard agreed. You have good taste. Nice place, right? Yes, it's so gorgeous and heavenly. Sorry, you were supposed to be here now, but you don't have to be sad. I'll enjoy it for you. I'm glad you liked it. It's worth $30,000, isn't it? $30,000? This place costs that much? 
Sophia, I'm really sorry. You paid $30,000 for us? I've changed the billing address to you two. Huh? Billing? You're paying the bill. What are you talking about? You. Weddings are usually paid in advance, right? So I talked to the planner and got her to change the payment to a later date. That's a lie. It's not a lie. That's the contract. You should check it. Wait. $30,000. That's too much. We don't have any guests. As you mentioned earlier, the ceremony hall itself is new and popular, so it's expensive. I consulted with the planner and chose the best time and day. I asked for the highest ranked albums and videos. You have five good photographers who shoot and edit with the best equipment. Lovely, isn't it? No, uh, I think it's lovely, but... Yes, Richard. He was originally going to be at the ceremony, so he'll pay for it, right? I don't know. I don't think he has that kind of money. It's my wedding. He'll pay, I promise. Shouldn't you talk about it before the ceremony? It's the day and you can't cancel it now, but otherwise you'll regret it later. Oh my, another sore loser at a time like this. Oh, the planner is calling. Back to the preparations. See you. Hey, Sophia, I got a bill of $30,000. What are you going to do about it? Richard doesn't have that much either. You can't just force me to pay. You made such a ridiculously expensive plan, so pay half. Don't be ridiculous. I don't see the point of paying for a wedding I didn't even have. Oh, I can't pay $15,000 even if I split with Richard. Oh. By the way, the alimony you will pay is set at $10,000. I'll charge you, so pay properly. What? Even $15,000 is impossible. Where did $10,000 come from? It's too expensive. I won't pay for that. $10,000 is within the market range. How much will Richard's alimony be if I am $10,000? Well, 15,000, about 21,000. I'm sorry you're doing the math, but Richard is a spendthrift. Don't count on him. If you don't work hard, you're going to fall together, okay? Hey, what? Now you're going to talk bad about him? Richard and I love each other. We'll get over the money problem. You're taking the blame on us because you weren't happy yourself. He's going to be unemployed soon. Erica, good luck supporting him. Ah, uh, what do you mean by unemployed? What do you mean? Oh, didn't you hear from Richard? He was having an affair not only with you, but also a woman he worked with. He got fired from his job when they found out. He'll be unemployed when the handover is over. Ah, uh, seriously? He... It seems that the woman he worked with was also married. It's hard to pay alimony. Wait a minute. I don't know what you mean. The woman he works with? Alimony? Are you panicking? Yes, I'm afraid I didn't expect a three-way. The husband of that woman seems to be very angry. I heard that he is charging a lot of alimony. From now on, you're both in debt. But if you love each other that much, it looks okay. Get through it with the power of love. Wait, wait. I don't know. What are you talking about? I haven't heard anything from him. A woman besides me? He said he loved me, even at the wedding. He said it a lot. 
Those words were all lies. Anyway, all you can do is pay in full. Wedding and alimony, you'd better pay early. As I said, Richard is a spender. Will you be paying for him? Don't tease me like that. I can't afford alimony, let alone a wedding without savings. And what does it mean he's unemployed? He... he is useless. I won't forgive him. Even if you find out that Richard is a piece of waste, you still have to pay the ceremony fee and alimony. Uh, hey, can you forgive me? I'm also paying for the wedding. I didn't plan. So, will you do without alimony? Hey, please. You don't know anything. You and Richard had the wedding, right? You two deserve to pay. Well, that's... You set the plan. You're the one who got married. As for the alimony, you had an affair with Richard, so you deserve to pay that too, right? If you really don't want to... If I don't... I can take you to court. It's even worse. I don't really know about trials and it sounds difficult and scary, you know? Absolutely no. Hey, Sophia... Will you forgive me? I'll give you back Richard. I think I did something really wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. Forgive me. Sophia, I'm so sorry. I'll do anything if you forgive me. No thanks. I don't want to be involved with you or Richard anymore. I'm going to delete your contact information. Wait a minute, please. Ah, ah. I deleted Erica and Richard's contact information shortly after that. Those two seemed to have gotten into a big fight because of Richard's other woman and they were on the verge of catastrophe. But while they were doing that, it seems she really got pregnant. They've registered for the baby and they're living together. Well... It was a predatory marriage after an affair, so it seems that no one around helped them, even their family. That's right. It's hard to give birth, raise an infant, work, and pay off debts. Richard still seems unreliable, and I'm glad she took that plague in. You're a good person, Erica. I'm grateful. Hi, Lucy. How are you? Ava? What's up all of a sudden? Nothing special, just normal. And you? I'm doing great. Really great. Something really good happened today. Something good? You seem very happy. <laughs> anyway, your moving was today, right? It must be tough to divorce and move out. Thanks for all your hard work until now, ex-wife. That's kind of a strange thing to say. Are you making fun of me? I'm not making fun of you, I'm just comforting you. I can't imagine how frustrating it must have been to live with your husband even though you knew he was cheating on you. I can picture your bitter expression. Ava, is there something different about you today? You're so slow to catch on, haven't you realized yet? That's why he cheats on you, you're such a carefree ex-wife. Wait, you mean it's you? You're the one who's been having an affair with him? You finally figured it out. You really are slow. Well, if you had noticed, you wouldn't have been discussing divorce with your affair partner, would you? Thanks for letting me know about your divorce and move. Now, thanks to you, I can finally live in this house as his official wife. Ava, what kind of a person are you? I thought we were best friends. I trusted you. You were just trusting me on your own, right? I never asked you to trust me. Today, my son told me you were coming to live with us. I thought it was some kind of joke. I never thought it could be true. Oh my, so your son told you, huh? He's so cheeky to me, but in the end he went crying to mommy, huh? Are you making fun of my son too? He's been really shocked because of you. He's been holed up in his room and not eating anything, you know? Oh, really? But, you know, I don't care about that. I just told him that your father belongs to me from now on. 
I just told him the truth. It's really embarrassing that he's so shocked he's holed up like that. Your son is such a weak child, isn't he? You're such a woman. My son is only 10 years old, you know? It's natural for him to be shocked to learn about his father's affair. And of all people, it's my best friend who's the other woman? Don't you have any empathy? Oh well, isn't this a great opportunity for him to learn about the adult world? Are you serious? You scumbag! By the way, you do realize that your son, whom you're making fun of, has that man's blood running through his veins too, right? The blood of the husband you fooled around with. And it's all your fault that we ended up like this. What are you trying to deny for? That kind of attitude is like a thief trying to act tough. Oh dear, you're getting so worked up. It seems like the ex-wife is really bitter about being taken away by me. <laughs> but that's why we're both apologizing, right? But you know what he said too? That because you're a stupid woman, if he pretends to apologize sincerely, you'll forgive him right away. You even said, I have had some faults too, didn't you? You really have a talent for pretending to be a virtuous wife. <laughs> oh, I can't help but laugh. You're such a woman. Your husband is really a joke too. He hasn't reflected on anything at all. Oh, we feel sorry for what we did to you. That's why he's offering to pay compensation and child support, isn't he? I've always thought your husband was a scumbag since I found out about the affair, but I guess you're just the same, huh? Oh, you want to call me a scumbag too? But, you know, it's ultimately your fault things turned out this way. What are you talking about? You know, I've liked Jack since we were students, but you took him away from me like that. I've never heard that story before. You didn't say anything about it, did you? But basically, that means it was just a one-sided love, right? At that time, he chose me. But that's not a good reason to break up someone else's family. If you have any complaints, you should tell Jack. Also, you've been calling me his ex-wife since earlier, but we're not divorced yet. You're just provoking me without even confirming that, saying he's mine from today. You haven't changed your carelessness since the old days. You're still the same old fool. Is that just sour grapes? Even if you're not divorced yet, his heart is no longer with you, right? So why don't you just admit that Jack is mine already? Don't resist poorly, just submit the divorce papers quickly, okay? It's not a poor resistance. The alimony and child support are our legitimate rights, my son's and mine. I won't submit them until they're properly settled. What? What's that? That's not what we agreed on. Submit them quickly. You have no right to order me around. Besides, it seems like you've been harassing my son too, so we need to talk about that properly too. Be prepared. What? Wait a minute. I didn't hear anything about that. You reap what you sow. I keep telling you, we're not divorced yet. I'll tell our lawyer about the incident before we get divorced. Also, the house you're currently in is still my house. If you don't leave soon, I'll contact the police for trespassing. Hey, what do you mean the police? Wait, Lucy? Hi, Lucy. How are you doing? Wow, you're able to contact me so normally. It's not like we're close or anything. I'm beyond angry. I'm just surprised at your weird energy. Can you please do something about it? It's really unpleasant. Huh? I'm always this cheerful, you know? So what do you want? Even though your best friend contacted you, you're being pretty cold, huh? What? Best friend? I wonder what you're talking about. You and I aren't best friends anymore. Could you please keep your dreams to yourself? Anyway, what's the real reason you're contacting me? Did you finally find a way to pay the full compensation you owe me? Oh, you're really being cold. You're asking for money from your best friend? That's terrible. <laughs> but unfortunately, we're not talking about compensation today. I have other important matters to discuss with you. Other important matters? You see, I think I notified you through my lawyer before, right? I told you not to contact me anymore. I told you I would block you immediately if you contacted me with stupid stuff, remember? I'm only responding to you now because of the amount of compensation and child support I'm supposed to receive from Jack hasn't been decided yet. Don't misunderstand me, okay? Honestly, I want to block you right now. Oh, it's actually an important matter. 
You know, Jack, he passed away. His funeral is the day after tomorrow, so I was wondering what you and your son are going to do. If you're going to attend, that's fine. What? What are you talking about? I said Jack passed away. Don't lie. You probably didn't know because you're separated from him. But it's true. He had a dangerous job, right? This time, the site was pretty dangerous too. He had an accident and fell from a considerable height. He was almost instantly killed. No way. It's a lie, right? Oh, I thought you would be even happier if your hated ex-husband died. But it seems like you're more shocked than I expected. <laughs> Were you actually shocked? Is it really not a lie? If you think it's a lie, why don't you ask his parents? I think they already contact I think they already contacted them too. Aren't you the one whose loved one suddenly died? Yet you seem so calm. Aren't you shocked? You seem very happy though. Well, you know, I was shocked too when I received the news, of course. But you know, that person had a very dangerous job, but the company's welfare was solid, you know? Of course, there was insurance too. I knew it. The insurance that person was enrolled in, it pays out a lot if he dies. It pays out that much, a huge insurance payout. Of course, it goes to me, his current wife. It's a proof of love from Jack. <laughs> You're still a scumbag as usual. You're the one making a fuss about money. It's so unsightly. Oh, are you jealous? It was supposed to be money you were going to get after all. <laughs> Since Jack is dead, there won't be any compensation for you either, huh? Is that your way of trying to make yourself feel better about losing? You really have a rotten character. <laughs> Sour grapes, maybe? Since Jack passed away, I will tell you this. He contacted me once. What? When was that? It was about two months ago, I think. He said he wanted to see his son. What is that? I never heard about that. He told me to keep it a secret from you because he knew you would get angry. That's unbelievable. What was the reason for meeting with him in the first place? Tell me! Why do I have to tell you? I don't have any obligation to tell you the contents of our conversation. You really are an annoying woman. I've hated you since the old days. Besides, you and Jack have been divorced for a long time, yet you continue to meet each other endlessly. It's pathetic how you cling into the past. It makes me sick. The same goes for your son, right? Even though he's not a father anymore, he keeps acting like he's still a father. Boys who act like girls don't get popular, you know? That's right. If you were a clueless, ignorant woman like you, you wouldn't be so hurt. What? What did you say? Our son is not angry with his father anymore, but that doesn't mean he forgives him either. What does that mean? I don't understand. You wouldn't be able to understand with that small brain of yours. Our son has grown up without us noticing. He's much more mature than you are. Even in difficult situations, he can calmly assess the situation. Oh, I see. Well, that's good to hear. It means he was able to grow thanks to me. <laughs> what a brilliant mind you have. Perfect for that stupid man. It's a great match. Shall I tell you what the man said to our son in the end? What did he say? I'm quitting being your father. From now on, you'll have to support your mother. He said that with a smile to a 10-year-old. Isn't he an idiot? I have to agree on that line at least. Honestly, I'm past being angry, and everything just seems ridiculous now. I'd give this stupid man away to anyone. I'd be happy if someone took him. He went out of his way to see you without telling me, but I can't believe he said these words. But it's good. Thanks to these awful words, my son has completely lost any last hope he had for a stupid father. In that child's mind, Jack is no longer a father or anything. He's just a stranger. At the time of the breakup, he apparently said, If you're a man, take responsibility until the end. You betrayed mom, so talk it out until she understands. I really don't know who the real adult is here. To think he had an affair with such a stupid woman and then caused trouble with alimony and child support until the end, only to die without resolving anything. Which one is the stupid woman? You were married to a stupid man too. Anyway, I'm saying that I'll pay the alimony and child support properly, but aren't you trying to extort an exorbitant amount of money from me? It's not an exorbitant amount. We discussed it properly with a lawyer, and this is the amount we agreed on. The lawyer said it's normal to demand this much because the maliciousness is high. What? Maliciousness? 
take a moment to reflect on your own actions. That's what I'm calling stupid. And that's the end of the conversation. There's nothing more to talk about with you. From now on, please contact me through my lawyer. Goodbye. Hey, Lucy! I know it was you who did it! You wicked woman! Answer me already! You've been making noise since this morning. It's really unpleasant. What's going on? How many times do I have to tell you not to contact me? You're really dumb. How dare you say that so shamelessly? You knew about it! What? You knew? What are you talking about? How long are you going to pretend not to know? I know you were behind it. How could you kick me out of Jack Sparrow like that? Uh, about that. It was your fault after all. Why couldn't I enter the venue? Who are they saying outsiders are not allowed to? I'm his wife, you know? Ah, oh, the exact same words again. You're not an outsider. Don't joke around. Who's the outsider then? I felt like there was a commotion outside, but... Oh, you were the one who was causing the commotion. How disgraceful. Everyone who came here was surprised and wondering what the fuss was about. Wait a minute. Where are you now? Wait, are you at the venue? Yes, is that surprising? What? Why are you here at the venue? It was decided that today's ceremony would be attended only by family and close relatives. No, no, this is ridiculous. What are the security guards doing? It's forbidden for outsiders to enter. Then you're the one who's an outsider. The ex-wife who divorced and left is pretending to be a family member. What are you talking about? You're a little crazy after all. What did you say? You're the one who's been claiming to be the wife, but you're not. You're just a cheating partner. What? Oh, didn't you understand? Well then, let me say it again. You're just a mistress. I am the wife. That's impossible. Are you the one who's crazy? You're just the ex-wife who has been kicked out. You're a really stupid woman if you still don't understand. Well, I guess you've never had good comprehension skills. What did you say? You're really noisy, you know that? Well, I'll explain it to the cheating woman over there who's screaming her head off. The funeral this time was decided by Jack's parents. It wasn't me who kicked you out. It was Jack's parents who decided that you were an outsider. I mean, think about it. Who would consider a woman who seduced their precious son and caused the breakdown of their family as a family member? All the attendees agreed with Jack's parents' decision, you know? Besides, Jack's wife is here at the funeral, isn't she? So I am the wife! Even though I've already said it, you still don't understand? Listen, even if there was a physical relationship, a woman who hasn't officially registered as a spouse cannot attend a funeral. You're the idiot here! Jack and I have officially registered our marriage! That's why I'm calling you stupid for not understanding that. Just to make it clear, Jack and I are still officially married. What? What are you saying? You really haven't heard anything from Jack, have you? Listen, I've told you multiple times, legally, we're still considered a married couple. And yet, you apparently went to submit a marriage certificate. I received a phone call and found out what happened. The person who received the notice was quite confused. After explaining the situation, your application was deemed invalid. That's not true! He didn't say anything about it? Well, he probably couldn't say anything. After the city office called, Jack also contacted me. He was really angry because he thought he had already taken his name off the registry. But here's the thing, I happened to be with his parents at the time. After all the help they've given us, we can't just get divorced without even greeting them, can we? So I was telling them about the circumstances leading up to our divorce. And then, at that moment, we received a call from Jack himself. He said, what the hell are you talking about? And his parents started yelling at him. Then they summoned him back to their house. Oh, Ava? You haven't been responding for a while now. What's wrong? Are you listening properly? Yes, I'm listening. Really? Okay then. <laughs> I'm telling you something important, so you better listen to the end, okay? I understand. Didn't I say that I'm listening? So, should I continue the story? When my husband came to his parents' house, he was scolded severely. Not only by his parents, but by the relatives who were invited to gather there. Of course, right? 
He had cheated on his wife with her best friend and was trying to run away without paying any compensation or child support, despite having a wife and son. It's like he got what he deserved. I was actually impressed. Jack was completely terrified. Whenever he tried to argue, he was easily shut down with logical reasoning. Everyone told him that they wouldn't allow him to get away with just getting a divorce and running away. They told him to talk to me about compensation and child support and settle things properly before anything else. Finally, Jack gave in and promised not to get a divorce until everything was settled. I can't believe it. I never thought you would show up at the funeral pretending to be the legal wife, since I thought you knew the truth about us. <laughs> That's because... it's because of Jack! Also, you said a lot of things about me and our son, didn't you? I told your parents everything because I thought it was wrong to keep it a secret. And then your parents and relatives got even more worked up. Even if you divorce me, they will never allow you to marry such an awful woman, and they were furious about it. What? What's going on? Too bad. If you hadn't tried to compete with me and our son, the divorce might have been finalized much sooner and you could have become the legal wife. It's all because of what you did, you wicked woman! Oh, by the way, you were the one who kindly introduced me to your affair partner, Ava. That's because... Well, you reap what you sow. You and Jack are really two of a kind. <laughs> Wait a minute, what does that mean for me? It probably means you have nothing, but I'm not really sure. You seemed so happy when you got the insurance money. You really are such a stupid woman. Is it true? Really? I have nothing? I have said it many times, but I am that person's legal wife. You are just a mistress. The funeral will be for family and close relatives only, so please leave if you are an outsider. If you keep making a scene, I'll call the police. Wait a minute, Lucy? Hey, why aren't you answering? I've been ringing the intercom for a while, but you're not coming out at all. I know you're there. Stop pretending you're not and come out already. It's Lucy. What do you want this time? You're so worked up. I know you're there. I've been ringing the intercom multiple times, so come out quickly. Hey, listen, I am actually at home right now, but the intercom hasn't rung once since earlier. What? You're lying. You said it rang multiple times, didn't you? Oh, by the way, I finally moved. That place you thought was my house is now someone else's house that I don't even know. Wouldn't it be better to leave before you get reported? What are you talking about? I didn't hear anything like that. Well, I don't see why I have to tell you. I wouldn't even dream of it. How many times do I have to tell you to not contact me directly? Today I have an important matter to attend to. Hey, I want to talk to you directly, so tell me your new address. What? Are you half asleep or something? I'm not gonna tell you my new address. That's terrible. We're supposed to be best friends, right? What are you talking about from years ago? Did you lose your mind? Ugh, you must have been crazy from the start. So have you finally lost your mind completely? If people act timid, you take advantage of it and say anything, don't you? Just tell me your new address already. That's why I don't want to tell you. I really can't get through to you, can I? Hey, I got kicked out of my house where I was living. You have to do something about it. What? What are you talking about all of a sudden? I don't understand at all. So, I was kicked out of the new place I was supposed to live in with Jack. The real estate agent and bank people suddenly came over. That house was bought in Jack's name. I bet you were behind this, weren't you? Do you think it's okay to do this to me? Apologize and return the house quickly because this is Ava's house. Explain to them right away from you. Then I'll forgive you. There's so much to criticize here. I don't even know where to start. Anyway, I don't owe you anything and I don't need your forgiveness. Stop pretending and contact them quickly. I'm not pretending, but... Wait, don't you have a misunderstanding about something? What are you talking about? Well, Jack is dead, isn't he? Everything in his name belongs to me now, because I'm his legal wife, of course. I already know that! You knew that already? Well, then that makes things easier. Of course the new place you and Jack were going to live in is also mine for free, but I don't need such a hateful house anyway. I sold it. That's why you're being told to leave. That house is no longer Jack's house, let alone your house. What did you say? You sold it? 
then the money you received from selling it isn't mine. Hand over the entire amount quickly. I really don't understand the thought process of crazy women. You're being so noisy. Hurry up and hand it over. There's no way I'm giving it to you. You really are so stupid, aren't you? Why do I have to pay you the money when you're just a cheating partner and an outsider? But, but, Jack suddenly died too, you know? He didn't leave anything behind. Don't you think that's a bit pitiful? Are you trying to manipulate me by crying now? Sorry, I don't think so at all. You're really a cold woman. I never thought you were such a person. Who's saying that? It was you who slept with your best friend's husband. You're the one who destroyed our best friend's family. You're the one who hurt our best friend's son's feelings, too. Where is there any room for sympathy for you? But, but, after all, it's Jack's own fault for dying in an accident. I was thinking that I finally caught a high-income husband and could live an easy life forever. It's hard for me to be criticized for something like that. Hey, I'm really in trouble here. I quit my job because Jack had a good income. You're Jack's wife, aren't you? Then it's only fair you give me some living expenses. Ugh, you're really impressive in your trashiness. What kind of tone is that? It's only natural, right? They say there's no cure for stupidity, and that's really true. Wait a minute. My phone has been ringing non-stop since earlier, and I was wondering what was going on. My local friends keep contacting me like crazy. What the heck is going on? Oh, that. I was thinking of telling everyone about our conversation. I keep sending screenshots to everyone. It's a cautionary measure to let everyone know what kind of person Ava really is. Don't you think we shouldn't create any more victims? They are all my precious friends. Besides, everyone was deceived by your external appearance, thinking that you wouldn't do something like that. I showed them the evidence. What did you say? Of course, I've been sending all our recent exchanges as well. Then everyone was surprised. I want to believe it's a lie, but now that we've exposed the evidence like this, it's impossible, right? That's why everyone is angry and contacting you. My condolences. What? Wait a minute, what's going on? Does everyone already know about everything that's happened so far? So, is that so? Please stop it now, okay? If you keep doing this, I won't be able to go back to my parents' house. Well, that might be true. Why are you doing this selfish thing? Stop it already! Tell everyone that it was all a lie! Apologize to me and give me some of the money too! It's you who needs to stop. You knew the risk when you decided to destroy someone's family, didn't you? I don't even understand what you're saying. Then don't ever interfere in my life again. Wait a minute! Lucy! Lucy! After that, I received several contacts from Ava, but I already informed my local friends about it. And when I told her that if she continues to be too persistent, I would consult the police, she stopped bothering me. But if she contacts me again, I plan to block her quickly. Ava, who I couldn't contact anymore, tried to return to her parents' home, but her parents had already been informed in advance about what she had done and rejected their daughter. They said they didn't raise her to become that kind of person and declared that she was disowned. They also stated that she was not allowed to cross their doorstep again. Since it had become a topic of gossip in the local area, she couldn't visit acquaintances, and I don't know where she is now. As for me, I bought three small houses with my husband's large insurance payout. One of them is for me and my son, and the other two were given to my in-laws and real parents, who love me like their real daughter. We live happily and noisily every day with lots of people. On holidays, we invite relatives and have barbecues, and my son grows up happily. My son, who has grown up receiving love from many people, says cute things like he wants to become a lawyer like his mom in the future to help people who have been hurt. Laura, enough is enough! To bring up the past and seek revenge like this now, it's cowardly! Do you want to make us suffer so much? Mary? What are you suddenly talking about? What did I do exactly? I didn't do anything. Don't play dumb. You put trash in front of mine and Kevin's house, and even graffiti on the wall, didn't you? Trash? Graffiti? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you to cut it out already. You're the only one who could possibly be responsible. Do you find pleasure in making us suffer? 
you suddenly contacted me and accused me of something I had nothing to do with. What are you trying to do? I broke things off with you and your group for good. We're not even childhood friends. And yet you are saying I am now searching your house and harassing you? Don't underestimate me. Hm. Our house is easy enough to find out about if you just ask around to acquaintances. You still hold a grudge against Kevin, don't you? That's right. This is your revenge for having your husband taken from you three years ago, isn't it? What are you talking about with revenge? I told you I don't know anything about it, didn't I? I really wish you would stop this already. Kevin was drawn to me because you have no appeal? So it's neither Kevin's nor my fault, is it? It's your own problem, and yet you act like we're the villains. You used to shout all those things back then, too, but didn't we forgive you for all of that? We even let you say your insults and anger because we couldn't help it. And yet you're still harassing us like this. If you have time to do that, then go work on improving yourself. You're not attractive, so you need to put in more effort than others, right? Don't you understand even that much? <sighs> you really don't listen, do you? It's not really me who's causing the trouble here, you know. I'm the one who's being harassed and bothered by you. Please stop already. Are you still bitter about losing a high-income, high-status husband? It's impossible for you to find someone like him now, isn't it? If you dare harass me again, you'll regret it. Hey, Laura. I heard from Mary that you were harassing our home. You seem to be the culprit. Do you still have feelings for me? Can't you forget about me yet? You suddenly contacted me and brought up this topic? I told Mary that it wasn't me. I'm not the culprit. Stay away from me. Are you planning to deny it now that you've been caught? How pathetic. Deny what? Huh? I already told you it wasn't me, didn't I? What do you and your wife want from me? Sorry, but I have a wife and family. I don't care about you anymore, haha. <laughs> Can't you stop bothering me? I'm not doing anything. It's not me, you know? I'm grateful that you introduced me to Mary when we were dating. Thanks to you, I was able to find the person I truly love. But that doesn't give you a reason to harass me, does it? You're an adult, so you should understand that. Oh yeah, I remember now. Looking back, I'm glad I introduced a guy like you to Mary. Stop pretending you are strong. You still want to see me, don't you? That's not true. I broke up with you. I have no intention of ever getting involved with a man like you again. You're just pretending to be strong, aren't you? You wanted to get my attention so badly that you resorted to harassment, right? I get it. I'm not a devil either. If you really want to meet me, I'll do it for a fee. How about $100 per hour? Why should I have to meet you? Absolutely not. I'm actually struggling financially too. Mary controls our household finances, so I only get a $300 allowance per month, which I've realized isn't enough. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what to say even if you tell me that. If you still have feelings for me, I'm willing to be with you if you pay me. I'm a nice guy, you know. Treating me as an ATM? Stop joking around. I don't want to pay you any money. Don't you want to see me too? You're actually happy when I message you, aren't you? How much more are you going to mock me? I already told you that I don't want anything to do with you. This chance is a one-time thing. If you pay me, we can meet even though we can't go back to how things were between us. I think it's the best offer for you, don't you? You pay me and I'll put up with it. I'm being kind, right, lol? Sorry to interrupt, but I'm already remarried and living happily with a kind husband. I don't want to have any more involvement with you. Please stop messaging me. Remarried? Who would marry a woman like you with no redeeming qualities? You're obviously lying. Doesn't that make you sad? Enough already! I cut ties with you! Don't ever contact me again! Your lies are so amateurish. I can see right through them. Did you really think I would be fooled by such a transparent lie? Do you want to make me jealous? You are such a shallow thinker. You just want to make a fool out of me, don't you? Well, do as you please. Goodbye. Laura, you harassed us again at our house, didn't you? I told you to stop it already. 
Here we go again. I already told you before, it's not me. I didn't do it. There must be another culprit. Don't lie. You're happy to see me suffer, aren't you? No, I'm not thinking anything like that. I just don't want to be involved with you anymore. I want to forget everything. Why would I start harassing you again? <laughs> what excuse do you have now? There was a pile of garbage in front of the entrance and even graffiti on the exterior wall. Why are you being so persistent? Just forget about Kevin already. Hey, Mary, if you really think I'm the culprit, do you have any evidence? Did you report it to the police? I'm doing you a favor by communicating with you, so don't talk down to me. I'm not talking down to you. If you suspect me, do you have any footage from the security cameras? Did you consult with the police about security measures? The culprit should be found, I'm sure. Why should I have to spend money on buying security cameras for your sake? I refuse. If you just stop harassing us, everything would be fine, wouldn't it? Mary, I've said it multiple times already, but it wasn't me. I'm being accused without any evidence. Can't you understand how I feel? Oh, I see. You won't admit it even if we go that far? Why would I admit it? It wasn't me. If you just apologized honestly, I would have forgiven you, but forget it! You owe me $60,000, including emotional damages. What are you talking about? It's about compensation! Pay $60,000! Why do I have to pay money? I'm telling you that I'll keep it from the police if you pay. Pay it! I'm not the one who did it. I'm not going to pay. It was for two months. You harassed me for two whole months, so you should pay for it! Two months? You mean it lasted that long? You're the one who did it! Don't act surprised now! Hold on, Mary. It's impossible for me. I was on a trip with my current husband for those two months. What? I went on a trip abroad. There's no way I could have harassed you. If you want, I can show you pictures from the trip. See? Do you believe me now? Wait a minute. You were remarried? Yes, that's right. I thought you still have feelings for Kevin. Not at all. I've denied it completely, haven't I? Remarriage is proof that I'm happy with my husband now. W wait what I haven't heard that you got remarried. Why didn't you tell me? We've been childhood friends, right? Why do I have to tell you? You're the one who stole my husband. You're a homewrecker, aren't you? I won't bother telling someone like you about my remarriage. But I thought you were harassing our house because you have unfinished business with Kevin. That's why I've been saying from the beginning that it wasn't me. I've said it many times. There must be someone else who's the culprit. Th that's You really seem to have been convinced that it was me. Is there no one else who might have a grudge against us? Like someone who, like me, got involved with someone else's boyfriend or husband? Isn't there anyone else? I I don't know. Okay. Well then, it's not my concern. You have no choice but to continue to endure the harassment, so then... Wh what Are you heartless? Can't you help me a little more? I'm really in trouble. I'm sorry for suspecting you of the harassment, so please help me. We're childhood friends, right? So, I don't care about us being childhood friends anymore. You ruined my happiness, and now you want me to help you? That's too much to ask for. If you want help, go ask your beloved Kevin for it. He even asked me for money because he's short on cash, so I'm sure he'll do anything for you if you pay him. Wait a minute, Laura. Please wait! I'm sorry, but I have a life too. I can't keep being tossed around by you guys. Harassment is a bad thing to do, but I can sure understand how the perpetrator feels. Anyway, do your best, and that's it from me. Goodbye. Laura, listen to me. As you suggested, I installed a security camera. Then, it turned out that my friend from university was the culprit. That woman, she still held a grudge against me for stealing her boyfriend, so she was harassing me. Isn't that the worst? I can't believe she would do something. What's with the attitude? I'm glad the culprit was found. Why are you venting your frustrations at me? You suspected me so much, and now... But Kevin said that it might be you, so I thought it was you. I'm really sorry.
but you know what? My university friend is also terrible. She said I put my hands on her boyfriend and collected evidence to demand money. Oh, wow. That's really something. It must have been hard to collect evidence for something that happened years ago. Why are you taking the culprit's side? I'm telling you, it's been tough for me. That woman demanded $10,000. Don't you think it's ridiculous? Wait, hold on a second. You said you stole her boyfriend back in college, right? What? That's not it. It happened recently. Recently? You mean after you married Kevin? That's what I'm saying. If it happened in the past, I wouldn't remember it. You know, she has every right to be angry. I can't believe what you're doing. Don't you think it's awful? What are you talking about? You cheated and now you're trying to deny it. Just pay up and take responsibility for what you've done. Why should I have to pay? It's not my fault that the guy was willing to come up to my room after I invited him in. Don't you agree? Didn't you know that the man you approached was your college friend's boyfriend? Huh? How could I not know? She was always bragging about him on social media, so I thought he was a great guy. But when I talked to him, he didn't have any good qualities and he didn't have any money. So we broke up after only a week. You know, stop ruining other people's happiness. You have always been like this since you were little. You stole my precious doll and when my art piece won an award in elementary school, you started saying things like the one I made was stolen without any sense. And then you even started flirting with the boyfriend I was dating. You know that? Even with Kevin, I didn't want to introduce you, but you threatened to make a scene if I didn't, which was really scary. So I had no choice but to introduce you. And as expected, you started cheating with Kevin. But I was just envious, you know? It's natural to envy someone who has something better than me. How can I understand that? I respect that friend of yours from college. Knowing you, you probably took some of that friend's things too, like their makeup or perfume. Am I wrong? Well, that's... I just borrowed them for a little while. See, considering what you've done, I can't sympathize even if you're being harassed. Kevin was the same way. It's a good thing I broke up with that cheating man, but at the time, I was so devastated. If I hadn't met my current husband, I might have resented you too and not even be in this world anymore. Have you ever thought about that feeling? I'm sorry. It's no use apologizing now. Hurry up and pay your friend the $10,000 and apologize properly. That's all. Wait a minute! Listen to my story till the end! What now? Is there something else? Well, that's because my friend thought I was going to run away when she told my parents about it. Oh, I see. So she knows how to treat you, huh? And then my parents got really angry. I haven't even been able to connect them since. Oh dear, so you're completely cut off? Well, I made sure to explain the situation to your parents when I divorced Kevin. What? You did that? Yes, they were angry then too. Your father said it was embarrassing to have such a daughter. That's why you couldn't even go to your house to introduce Kevin, right? Mom told me later that there were some screams coming from your house that could be heard all over the neighborhood. So that's why Dad didn't meet Kevin. What should I do? I was thinking of asking for help with the payment. Help from your father? Why do you need his help? You were asked to pay $10,000, right? That's right. Well, it's just that I can't pay it. $10,000 is a lot of money. That's why I wanted my dad to help me. Is $10,000 a lot of money? You're in charge of Kevin's money, right? Then why can't you pay $10,000? You still haven't admitted your guilt, have you? Admit it and pay up properly. That's not it! It's just that the constant phone calls from the collection agency are so annoying, so I was planning to pay it off, but Kevin's salary is hardly anything. Nothing? What? Did Kevin quit his job? He seemed so happy working before. No, he's working. He's working, but... But what? He's not giving you any money? That can't be right. Kevin said he didn't have enough allowance, so he must be giving you money, right? I heard he entrusted it to you. You're not saying you haven't saved any money, are you? I haven't been saving money. What? He earns more than the average person. Why can't you save? But because 
I spend it on going to salons, beauty parlors, and the other day they released new makeup. And they said that only the first hundred people get a bonus, so I had to hurry and buy it. And I can't be satisfied with cheap aesthetic treatments. That's why I've been using our money for those things, and now we don't have any left. Mary, I'm sorry, but I can't empathize with you at all. It's all for your own sake, isn't it? Does Kevin know that the money he earned is being spent on beauty salons and aestheticians? Have you told him that? I can't say that! I told Kevin that I'm saving for our future children, and I want him to help me save by cutting back on expenses. Well, even more reason why I can't sympathize with you. You lied to your husband, selfishly spent money, cheated, and even got disowned by your parents. And now what? What do you want me to do for you? Do you want to borrow money? I'm sorry, but I have to refuse. Knowing you, you'll just borrow the money and disappear without a trace. It's not my problem. Please don't say such cold things. Please help me. We've been childhood friends, right? Please. No, I won't do it. Being suspected as the harasser, having my husband taken away from me. Why do you think I would help you? I've said it many times before, but I don't want anything to do with you two anymore. I'm living happily now. Don't bother me anymore. Don't rely on me. Don't contact me anymore. Laura, please help me. I'll apologize. It's too late for apologies. It's already too late. Well then, goodbye. Good luck with the payment. Laura, please! Laura! Help me! Laura! Laura, can you listen to me for a sec? Mary is such a terrible person. After she married me, she apparently cheated on me. And now, the woman she cheated with is demanding money from me. And since I can't pay, she's asking me for help. Why do I have to help someone who cheated on me? Isn't that ridiculous? Why are you complaining to me? I told you I don't want to get involved with you anymore, right? If it's about your marriage, you should try to solve it with your spouse. Can't you just listen to me vent for a bit? We're friends, aren't we? Besides, listen to this. I asked her what level of guy she cheated on me with, and she showed me a picture of him, and he's a whole lot uglier than me. She made excuses like, when I changed my voice, he came with me. But cheating is cheating, right? How did I end up marrying someone like her? I'm such a pathetic guy, don't you think? Not really. Why? Why? Because I got cheated on. Don't you feel sorry for me? Don't you remember what you did in the past? When you were married to me, you cheated on me with Mary, didn't you? You're okay with your own infidelity, but you criticize Mary for hers? You're the lowest of the low. What's your problem? Are you still angry about that? Isn't it obvious? You betrayed me. Do you think I can just forgive that? Just so you know, I've known since childhood that Mary is that kind of person. She believes that it's okay to take or steal anything from someone who is inferior to her. And yet, you followed such a woman. If you can't forgive being cheated on, shouldn't you blame yourself first for cheating? D don't be so angry. I'm sorry. Don't you think you shouldn't be so angry with Mary? After all, you did the same thing. Just pay her the money, you have it. What do you mean, just the money? What do you want from me now? I told the same thing to Mary, but I'm happy with my current husband. Please don't interfere. You're just a nuisance. You and your spouse are. If you understand, don't contact me ever again. Goodbye. Mary apologized to her college friends and parents, but they didn't forgive her. She somehow managed to gather the money, but it turned out to be from selling Kevin's expensive car that he bought as a hobby. Kevin was furious that Mary sold something that belonged to him without permission and suggested a divorce. He insisted that Mary return all the money she embezzled under the guise of a salary management, but Mary refused to divorce, using her beauty as a shield. The two are apparently in the midst of divorce negotiations. Hello, Judy. How are you? Eric? It's been a while. I thought we had long since lost touch. What brings you here now? It's been a while. I think the last time we contacted each other was after graduating from college. I have some news for you today. Actually, I'm getting married soon. 
I really want you to come to the wedding. I've sent you an invitation. Has it arrived yet? You're getting married. Congratulations, but there's no way I'm going to your wedding. I'll send back the RSVP with a decline. Don't say that. Please mark your attendance. I'll be waiting for your response. I'll send back the RSVP, but I won't be attending. If possible, please don't contact me again. Goodbye. Judy, did you RSVP to the invitation? You said you couldn't attend yesterday, but that was a joke, right? Of course you'll be attending, right? I can't believe you would say that. I'm disappointed. I RSVP'd with a decline. Why would you do that? I specifically invited you to come. Do you have something else going on? What you did to me, have you forgotten already? What I did to Judy? Do you not remember why we broke up? You cheated on me with my friend, didn't you? While we were together, you were tempted by my friend and you dumped me, right? Oh, that's what this is about. You can't possibly have forgotten. And yet, you have the audacity to send me a wedding invitation. You really have no tact. It's no big deal, just inviting you to my wedding. And the bride isn't even Anne. Even though you knew that you and I were dating, Anne cheated on you? I thought you two were good friends. Well, you two were close, right? I do feel a little guilty about dating Anne. But is it really worth getting so angry about? I haven't forgiven the two of you yet, and I have no intention of forgiving you in the future. There's no way I'm attending your wedding. I can't offer my congratulations. Absolutely not. What are you even thinking? Okay, okay. That's all in the past, isn't it? <laughs> How long are you going to hold on to this? Just forget about it. I can't forget about it, you know. I lost both a boyfriend and a friend I trusted. I was deeply hurt by being betrayed by both of them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I apologize, so please forgive me. <laughs> you don't even seem sorry enough to forget about it. You don't even have the intention to apologize, right? Even if you apologize, it's the same. I won't forgive you. Okay, okay, calm down. But anyways, listen to me instead. I went ahead to the wedding venue with Anne. It's really luxurious. So I talked to Anne about having a grand wedding that would match the venue. Both Anne and I have a lot of friends, so we want everyone to celebrate with us. I want a lot of people to come, you know? All of our friends from college, I sent them invitations. So if Judy comes, it will surely be fun. It might be a little tough to see us happy together, though. <laughs> I've said it many times, but I won't be attending the wedding. I can't forgive you for cheating, knowing that you were my boyfriend. And I can't forgive Anne for dating you and stealing you from me after knowing that. I have no intention of getting involved with you two in the future. Don't contact me again, okay? It's already in the past. Just come to the wedding, okay? I've said it many times, but I want to have a grand wedding. For that, I want to invite a lot of people. After all, I met Anne in college, so I sent invitations to all our college friends. It's only natural, right? I haven't received a response yet, but I'll be able to see everyone. Aren't you looking forward to it? I don't know about your circumstances. We can meet without the two of you around. So it's not necessary to see each other at the wedding. Inviting your ex-girlfriend like me is something I can't imagine happening normally. Anne is insisting that Judy must come no matter what. Anne? Is she planning something strange? Well, I don't know. I don't want to see Anne either. There seems to be something fishy going on, so I don't want to go even less. I'm hanging up now. Goodbye. Hey, hey, the conversation isn't over yet. Goodbye. Hi, Judy. Long time no see. Are you doing well? Well, I guess not. <laughs> I got your RSVP for the wedding invitation, but you won't be attending? <laughs> I asked Eric to persuade you. But now it's you following in his footsteps. I'm fed up with this. What? I told Eric too, I have no intention of getting involved with you two. Hey, first of all, congratulations on our wedding, right? Celebrate our happiness. Your friend is getting married. I don't consider you as my friend anymore. 
I think you two are the worst. I can't even congratulate you. <laughs> Stop saying such horrible things. <laughs> well then, you don't have to think of us as friends either. Please come to the wedding, otherwise my plan will be ruined. <laughs> plan? What are you talking about? It's a brilliant plan. To see you witnessing Eric and Mai's happiness and feeling frustrated. But if you don't come to the wedding, that plan won't work out, right? I want to show you myself in a wedding dress. So are you attending then? I'll reserve a seat for you. Huh? Are you sane? I can't imagine a rational person thinking like that. Do you even understand what you're saying? I feel nauseous. I don't even feel angry. What is this plan of yours? Did you see the invitation? Don't you think the venue is gorgeous? At that luxurious wedding venue, surrounded by numerous guest blessings, I will spend a happy day. I will flaunt that sight in front of you, and you will feel ashamed of your actions. Fall to your knees and reflect. <laughs> Imagine it, how miserable you will be. <laughs> Isn't it a great plan? Reflect? On what? What should I reflect on? I wonder what actions I should feel ashamed of. I think you and Eric should be the ones reflecting, though. Huh? Don't you have any idea? Oh, did you forget that I married Eric and it shocked you? Oops, my bad. <laughs> but you know, Eric chose me over you because I'm cuter than you. And he said being with you is boring. Poor Judy. Well, I really don't understand what you're saying. Can you explain it to me in a way I can understand? You don't get it? Wow, I didn't think you were that dumb. <laughs> Alright, I'll explain it to you. You see, back in college we were friends, right? Until you cheated with Eric, that is. I thought we were good friends. Well, we were friends, but I actually didn't like you all that much. Is that so? Then why did we hang out together? You were just a supporting role for me. That's why I hung out with you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have become friends with someone like you. A supporting role? Did you really think such cruel things? I was just pretending to be close to you. You ugly thing. I thought men would dote on me. For that reason. But it turned out to be different. They were all seemingly clueless guys who went after you. There's no reason for them to choose you over me, considering I'm cuter. Well, you always acted cute in front of guys, didn't you? Did you want to be liked by men so badly? Do you remember that you have a boyfriend named Eric? Are you not fabricating memories? I don't recall ever acting cute in front of guys. Really now, weren't you desperate to be liked by men? Yet, when approached by men, you would say things like, That person's personality is a bit off, or they're not my type. Weren't you picky with men? It was so unpleasant. What an arrogant woman you are, Judy. I don't do such vulgar things like being picky with men. And besides, all the men went towards me because you treated the boy so poorly. Everyone was saying that Anne is cute but has a harsh personality. I even tried to defend you, saying that's not true, Anne is a kind girl. But looking back now, I didn't need to do that. What are you talking about? I'm not the one at fault here. It's all the men's fault for being fooled by someone like you who pretends to be innocent when in reality you're a self-centered woman who likes men. So I thought I would make you reflect on your actions. If someone doesn't do it, you'll never understand, right? That's why I planned it all out. A woman who manipulates men around her deserves to be punished, don't you think? So I invited your precious boyfriend to my wedding with him and showed him my happy appearance. I thought it would make you reflect a little. Do you understand? It's all for your sake to make you realize. I'm such a kind person, aren't I? Such delusional thinking and talking about punishment? Who do you think you are? It's a nuisance to be dragged around by your delusions. It's not a delusion, it's the truth. You were a self-centered woman pretending to be innocent. Are you still going to say such things? You don't seem to have any intention of reflecting at all. I'm glad I planned it after all. Come to the wedding, won't you? When you see me as a bride, I'm sure you'll feel quite bitter. Did you really think that you're superior to me? Too bad. <laughs> I'm marrying Eric, whom you like. After the wedding, I'll build a happy family. Something you can't do. <laughs> You should reflect on your past actions if you're capable. I don't have anything to reflect on. 
I won't attend the wedding, and I'm not even remotely regretful that you're marrying Eric. Do whatever you want with the wedding or anything else. I know how frustrating this must be for you. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I never had any intention of marrying Eric or having a shotgun wedding. I feel a little sorry for Judy, though. Eric says I'm better than you and that he'll make me happy. Jealous, aren't you? After all, you won't be able to marry anyone. <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. You betray people and yet you act so insensitive. I don't want to marry Eric or anyone like him. Well, I wish you happiness. Enjoy your time together, the two of you. <laughs> no energy to argue back? Feeling down? Poor thing. <laughs> yes, I'm tired of it already. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> Poor thing. Just make sure you attend the wedding, okay? I want you to reflect. Listen, Anne, I'll say it again and again. I have no intention of attending the wedding. Can't you at least admit that? I see. Even after saying all this, you still won't attend. But at least now you understand what kind of actions you've taken in the past. It's a pity you won't be able to attend the wedding, but in terms of prompting reflection, it's a success. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Yes, that's true. If you can't come, at least prepare a congratulatory message, even just one. You can explain all the foolish things you've done in the past and how wonderful of a couple we are. <laughs> Come up with an impressive message befitting a grand wedding. Think about it. Incoming call. Incoming call. Hey! Incoming call. Pick up the phone! Don't keep calling me multiple times. You're being persistent. I don't want to be involved with you anymore. How many times do I have to say it to get through to you? I don't care about such things. What are you even doing for me? I'm busy, so stop it. Answer my question. Why did you send me that? It's ruining the wedding. Oh, come to think of it, today was the wedding, right? Congratulations. Did everyone get to see our happy face? As if I would ever think that. What was that movie about? I'm glad it arrived safely. How was my message in the movie? Huh? Did it move you? I won't be moved by it at all. You embarrassed me. Sending something like that, what were you thinking? It's because you pressured me to prepare a congratulatory message to let all the guests know what kind of foolish things you've done in the past and what an amazing couple you are. I worked together with everyone to create it. Don't joke around. You ruined the wedding. And besides, what do you mean by work together with everyone? Explain. You invited some of our college friends, right? Did anyone attend? None of our friends attended. Did you do something? I'm sure you did something. Did you threaten everyone not to come? Don't blame me for it. I wouldn't do such a stupid thing. It's not me we're talking about here. After you sent invitations to everyone, I received messages from everyone saying, it looks like Eric and Anne are getting married. They seem to want to have a grand wedding and have sent invitations to all their college acquaintances. I wonder if Judy didn't receive one either? You see, everyone knows about you trying to steal Eric from me when we were dating in college, how Eric fell for it and cheated on me, and how he dumped me. So when they found out I was also invited, they were astonished at your insensitivity. When I told them that you asked me to send a congratulatory message, they were at a loss for words. They couldn't believe how audacious you were. That's when everyone said they would help put together not a congratulatory message, but rather a video exposing your actions. What? You have some interesting friends. By the way, I... I never said not to attend the wedding. I think everyone chose to decline the invitation based on their own will. It's only natural considering they know about your actions during our college days. Why would you say something so cruel? Everyone is being so harsh. It's ironic how you can say such things while disregarding your own actions. Well, in the message video, everyone revealed a lot of things, didn't they? Wasn't it initially about how you plotted to steal Eric from me even though I was dating him and how arrogant you were deceiving other guys around us? You thought you would make me reflect on my actions and took Eric away, right? Your imagination knows no bounds. Everyone testified to that, didn't they? They said I was pretending to be innocent. But in reality, you twisted the facts and approached Eric on your own. 
It's not a delusion. You acted all cute in front of guys in reality. Eric must have been a fool to be deceived by you and cheated on me. It's really ridiculous. And on top of that, you tried to invite me to your wedding after doing such cruel things. That's so insensitive, as they pointed out. Did you understand that? Well, in order to have a lavish wedding, you need to invite a lot of guests. And besides, what happened in college is in the past. Forget about it already. I wanted you to reflect on your actions. That's why you needed to come to the wedding. That's what they're calling insensitive. Why can't you understand that? Oh, by the way, I didn't realize it at the time, but it seems like Eric was quite a player. Even after officially dating you after we broke up, many girls testified that they were approached by him. Even when they rejected him, he kept trying to pursue them and it was bothersome. So they said. I didn't know he had such a habit of cheating. It seems like he was careful not to get involved with acquaintances from college. If we had stayed together and gotten married, I shudder to think about it. It's a good thing we broke up. And I have you to thank for that, at least. Thank you. I didn't know either that Eric was fooling around with other women like that. It's a terrible betrayal. It seems he was playing around until just before the wedding. With so many testimonies coming out, he must have been quite promiscuous, right? I didn't know. I was also deceived. Well, Eric's story was also awful, but so were you. You caused trouble for many people, just like me, by being an arrogant woman and making baseless accusations. These were testimonies that said... There were testimonies that said they received one-sided harassment from you. It wasn't just baseless accusations. There were legitimate reasons for it. Maybe the problem was on your end? By the way, there were quite a lot of people who were affected by you guys, huh? Thanks to that, I never ran out of material for my movie. <laughs> Thank you. Editing was tough, but I'm happy to see that people got to see it. I'm sure everyone who helped is also happy. You're so noisy! I didn't want to see that kind of thing. I heard that there would be a surprise movie, and I was so excited! I was planning to introduce you guys in a positive way, but it turned out like that. It's not my responsibility, right? <laughs> I heard from friends who attended the wedding that you guys were making a fuss like stop stop during the movie It was a message movie that we all made with effort your parents and other guests must have been surprised Knowing that the bride and groom are such terrible people Please stop it already thanks to that movie the wedding was ruined and then Eric's parents told me we didn't think our son would marry such a girl Eric may be at fault too, but please pretend this marriage never happened the whole wedding is on the verge of being cancelled! My parents also said don't marry such a man. Eric is also hurt. He hasn't said a word to me since the wedding ended. Can you understand our feelings? I don't want to understand. I don't want to think about it. What kind of cruel woman are you? Take responsibility! Yes, you're right. Since the wedding was ruined, you need to compensate us. Pay for the wedding expenses, and we'll also charge you for damages. I'll make sure to bill everyone involved in that movie. I refuse. Why do we have to pay? Because your movie completely ruined our wedding. Marriage is about to disappear. Of course, right? That you take responsibility and pay for all the expenses we incurred. I already told you I refuse. Why don't you instead worry? Why don't you worry about yourself instead? What if you were sued for your actions so far? It must be tough, right? How many people have you harassed in the past? Just by saying you're making a movie, you've gathered quite a number of victims, you know? What will you do if everyone sues you? Well, that's... In fact, you might end up being sued instead. And, besides harassment, you boasted about shoplifting, haven't you? You probably have many other shady things you're hiding, aren't you? Are you really okay? Um, well... And if Eric's parents are against the marriage, they might sue you too. That's... But Eric promised to make me happy. Now that they've seen your true nature, they might want to retract their support. Do you understand? You've caused a lot of trouble for those around you all this time, even if you didn't realize it. No matter how much you want something, you shouldn't take what belongs to others. You shouldn't harass others based on your assumptions. You don't even understand such basic things, do you? It should be a valuable lesson for you. You should change your behavior from now on. Like that? If you understand, then never bother me again. 
If you do that, I won't demand compensation from you, I won't report your past crimes, and I'll even delete the movie. How about that? Understood. Don't contact me anymore. I'm cutting you off. Hey, Judy? Hey, listen, don't ignore me. Eric's gone. Hey, do you know where he is? Answer me. Ugh, you really can't understand my words, can you? Didn't we promise not to get inv Didn't we promise not to get involved with each other anymore? And didn't we promise to keep the past in silence? Can't you even understand something as simple as that? Can I sue you? That's not the point! The day after the wedding, Eric disappeared! Do you know where he is? Do you have any idea? I wouldn't know where he is. Why are you asking me? I'm asking not only you, but everyone else, too. But nobody gives me any answers. Are they all hiding, Eric? Where could he have gone? He doesn't answer his phone, and my messages remain unread. I wonder if he ran away because you asked for compensation as a condition for marriage. <laughs> How do you know about that? I heard from a friend who attended your wedding. After watching that video, I found out that Eric had been involved with someone other than me. You were apparently quite angry about the fact that he was fooling around until right before the wedding. Well, it's only natural to be angry. I was betrayed, so it's only expected, right? And you too were accused of various wrongdoings in that video. But you seem to have turned a blind eye and confronted him. Did Eric say anything? I remember him saying that he didn't think you were that kind of woman. But what I did was just a little thing, right? I don't think it's something to worry about. Instead of that, Eric should want to marry me more than you, so I'm willing to forgive his infidelity if he pays compensation for his betrayal. It's not strange at all, is it? I'll say I'm marrying him, so he should be happy, right? Why is he running away? This is strange. Ah, <sighs> my head hurts. Maybe Eric is already with one of the other girls he's close to. Just like me, being abandoned by you. That's impossible. There's no way I could be abandoned. Anyway, don't get involved with me anymore. No, tell me Eric's whereabouts. If you really don't know where he is, you could search for him together. We were friends, right? I'm saying I don't know. You're really persistent. How many times do I have to tell you not to get involved with me? If you contact me again, I'll have my husband take legal action. What? Husband? Whose? You're married? What do you mean? Weren't you supposed to marry Eric? When did that happen? I never wanted to marry Eric. I am already married to someone else and we have children. What? I didn't know. You got married before me and even have children. What an arrogant woman you are, thinking you can get married before me. Is there a rule that says I can't get married before you? I'll do as I please when it comes to marriage. But considering you as a potential husband, he's not that great, huh? Don't make fun of my husband. He may be older, but... I bet! There's no way you could marry a good man. You settled for an older man because you couldn't attract someone from your own age group, right? <laughs> That's the only way you could get married, huh? Oh, wait. But you mentioned asking your husband for legal action. What do you mean? Don't tell me. My husband is a lawyer, a very competent one. What? A lawyer? If he wants to, he can easily pursue legal action against you and your friends. Hold on a moment. I didn't ask for your opinion. A lawyer, you say? Well... I could sue you for your past misdeeds as well. Stop that! You said you wouldn't sue me! It's because you're so persistent, despite me telling you to stay away and stop harassing me with repeated contact that it's become a nuisance. Why did you get married to a lawyer? An ugly person like you? It's none of your business, right? By the way, I received a call from your parents earlier. They said their daughter was hurt and embarrassed because of me and blamed me for sending the video, even though you were the one who asked me to send congratulatory messages. <laughs> I told them that it was a collaborative effort with everyone, but they fell silent. <laughs> After that, they kept asking me for Eric's whereabouts, just like you, so I told them if they continue to cause trouble, we can have a legal discussion. They hung up right away. Your parents are just as unreasonable as you. <sighs> Why do I have to go through all this? I just wanted you, Eric and Judy, to reflect on your actions a little. It's all just your self-centered delusion, though. I don't even know if I can get married, and yet Judy is already married to a lawyer and has children. Why is that? Poor me. 
Is it over now? I have nothing more to say to you. Wait! Yes, I just came up with a good idea. Judy, if your husband is a lawyer, then help me get compensation from Eric. I want to get married too. Give me a hand. If your husband is a lawyer, he can handle it, right? Find Eric and claim compensation. Of course, you and I are friends, so you won't charge me any fees, right? Or if Eric is found, I'll make him pay for it. What are you talking about? I'm truly disgusted. Do you really think I'll help you? Do you not remember what you did to me with that video? You're not even reflecting on anything at this point. I don't understand. I have no intention of helping you. I'm sure if you ask anyone else, they'll say the same thing as me. That's right, help me! I hate it. Why don't you try asking someone else for help? Just try asking for help from someone else as an experiment. Oh, but even if Eric is gone, no one will respond, right? Well, it might be impossible then. Please, I beg you, help me find Eric. We used to be friends, right? Did you forget about that? It's true that we had good times together, but I was just a pawn for you to use, remember? You were just pretending to be friends with me. We were never friends to begin with. I'll delete your contact information too. Don't ever contact me again. If you try to contact me again, I'll really have my husband press charges against you. Hey, please help me, I'm begging you. Your husband is a lawyer, right? Please cooperate. Hey, I'm begging you, don't ignore me. Anne desperately searched for Eric, but he was never found. She was ignored by Judy and pleaded with other friends for help, but as Judy had said, no one lent a hand. And so, Anne and Eric's marriage effectively fell apart. Anne played the role of the tragic heroine abandoned by her husband, but those around her who knew the truth were incredibly cold. No one sympathized with Anne. A few years later, she met a new man and thought it was a fateful encounter, but he turned out to be a fraud. Without realizing it, Anne was swindled out of all her remaining assets. Now, it seems she quietly lives with her parents. Joyce? Where are you? Are you not coming home yet? Rihanna, sorry. I'm having drinks with my mates. I'm celebrating my promotion. I'll be home soon. Celebrating your promotion? You're promoted? You didn't tell me. Oh, right. I was gonna tell you once I got home, so you didn't know. Yeah, I was told unofficially recently. My career is secured, I guess. Wow, congrats. Thanks. We're celebrating it today, so I'll be home late. Really? But we have my family gathering tomorrow. I'll introduce you to everyone, so you need to be there. Well, yeah, of course I'll be there. That's good, but we have to leave pretty early in the morning. Are you going to be able to make it after drinking this much? Yeah, yeah, I won't get drunk. Plus, my mates were the ones who asked me out. I wasn't about to say no to them. I get that, but... Tomorrow's gathering has been scheduled for over a month now. You could have kept that in mind and said no. Oh, don't be upset. These guys will be working for me someday. If I ever want to get another promotion, I need to build up a good relationship with these guys. Tonight could mean a lot for my career. Understand, Rihanna? Listen, I'm not against drinking with your folks. But if you have an important event the next day, you should prioritize it, shouldn't you? That's all I'm saying. This is for our life. For our life? Yeah! These guys join my team, work for me. This will make my career, meaning I can support you. And if we're ever to have a family. This is not just for me only, it's for you too. Still, you should prioritize the schedule you already planned, I think. If you saying no to their invitation once is enough for them to leave you, doesn't that mean that they never really respected you? What's wrong, Rihanna? You don't get upset like that. Why are you so serious? I I'm not upset. Just worried. I mean, when you first met my parents... 
You were hungover, remember? At that time, my parents were very upset, and we had to apologize many times. Remember? Yeah, that happened. My uncle, who's been taking good care of me, is coming tomorrow. If the same thing happens again, we'll be in huge trouble. So don't drink too much and come back home already. <sighs> Before going to meet your parents, I needed some drinks. To relax, you know? You see, meeting your parents made me more anxious than I'd ever been. I should say, this time it's the extended family, but... They are still your family. I'm nervous, so my friends and I will go to a couple more places, and after that, I should be relaxed, and then I'll come home. A couple more places? Are you going to have more drinks? Until what time? You'll miss the last train. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not going to miss the last train, so let me just get relaxed for once. Drinking's the only way for me to forget things. You say for once, but didn't you just grab drinks the other day? No, you've been doing this almost every day, am I wrong? You sure? Well, yeah, we had to apologize many times, but... Uh, birthdays of my boss and my mates, I mean, I, I have to be there. I'm the life of the party, you know? The life of the party, huh? I know quite a lot of places, so people come to me. What can I do? If you go out this often, fine, but please come home early, just for today. Please. Come on, Rihanna. What's wrong? This isn't like you. Tomorrow's a very important day. I know that, but then don't nag me like this for a mistake I already apologized for. It's like I'm talking to your parents. Are you becoming like them? Becoming like them? Of course I'm like them. They're my parents. <laughs> You're right. Oh my god. You're pretty drunk. Joyce, you should be home already. Don't stay until the last train. Please, can you just leave now? Enough. I'm doing this for my future. Got that? You don't understand. Marrying a person like you is very stressful. So, to let off some stress, I'm having drinks. What's so wrong with it? Are you going to take away every little thing that I enjoy? That's not what I'm doing. Just... My parents and I want to welcome you into our family. And I'm very worried that we'll be humiliated again. Please understand. Oh, boy. I'll catch the last train, and I'll be there tomorrow, so could you please back off now? Okay. I understand. Sorry to bother you, Joyce. I'll see you when you get home. Later. Two hours later. Rihanna, I'm sorry. I, I missed the last train. What? You promised me! You promised me you'd catch the last train! Why can't you just keep your promises? I told you. What now? My family made time for our gathering, so it's not going to be rescheduled. I'm leaving at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Can you make it? Oh, yeah. No worries. I got plenty of time. I'll take the first train in the morning, then I should be able to make it, right? It'll be fine. The first train in the morning? I don't think you can catch it. I can. Well, just in case, why don't you just come back home now, by a cab? Well, I paid almost everything tonight. So, I wonder if I'll have enough to ride a cab. I don't think so. And, uh, I had too much to drink. I'll get sick in a cab. I'll rest somewhere and then head home. I, I can pay for your ride when you get here. Throwing up in a cab is the most humiliating thing in the world. No cab. Okay. Wait a second. Leaving at 8am. 
Isn't that too early? Are we really supposed to meet up that early? My family members are quite busy. They've tried really hard to schedule this meeting for us, and this was the only time that everyone was available. I've tolerated your drinking enough, right? So I'm asking you to be there on time for this one gathering. Okay, okay, don't get upset, yeah? I'm not upset. I'm just uneasy, since you didn't come back home. I'm telling you, I'll be home, taking the first train in the morning. Trust me. You told me that you'd be home with the last train. My bad. The first train in the morning. That's it. Trust me. Please. Promise. Don't be late at all costs. I'm doing this for you. You don't have to say it a thousand times. I know. Okay, you should go to bed now. If you look tired, your family and friends will all say that it's my fault. Fine. I'm off to bed now. Be sure to catch the first train. Yeah, I promise. I'll go with one of my mates and stay up drinking all night so I don't sleep through the train coming. That way I can't miss the train, right? <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, I guess... If you'll be up all night, but I really don't want you to drink anymore. Okay, once I'm on the next train, I'll text you. You'll probably still be sleeping, so don't worry about replying to it. Okay, fine. Well then, good night. Five hours later. Joyce, it's 6 a.m. already. The first train should be running. Are you on it? I thought you'd text me. Joyce? Hey, if you're up, text me. One hour later. Joyce! Are you still sleeping? It's 7 a.m. now. You should be heading home by now, otherwise you'll be late. Hey, Joyce! Where are you? Joyce? One hour later. Uh, I'm sorry, Rihanna. I fell asleep. Uh, I might still be drunk now, too. I'm so sorry. I I'll hurry to go home. Rihanna? Are you mad? My bad. I couldn't read your texts. I was gonna wake up. You know that, right? Where are you? Still home? Please be ready with my clothes. And we can leave right away. Rihanna, text me back. Forget about it. I'm on my way. I'm sorry. I woke up at 6.30 once. I did, really. But I fell back asleep. I'm hurrying up now. I hope I can make it. No, I will make it in time. No need. Huh? You don't have to come. Oh, don't say such a thing. I'll be quick. No, have another drink and enjoy the day. Who is going to drink this early in the morning? Come on, don't be mad like that. We could still meet your family. If we argue, they'll wonder if we're like this all the time. Oh, you say things like that now, but you didn't get home on time. No, don't even bother. You don't have to come. I don't need you. Hey, watch your mouth. Fine, if you say so, I won't come. It's just a family gathering. You could have just showed up by yourself from the beginning. Joyce, I can't stay with someone who keeps breaking promises like this. What are you saying all of a sudden? I want to call off our engagement. What are you saying? Why? Is your family talking you into this? No. I was determined to break up with you if you didn't come back home as you promised. What? I packed up all my stuff yesterday, and I moved out of our apartment already. Hey, you can't be serious, Rihanna. I'm serious. At today's gathering, I'll tell everyone about this broken engagement. Stop kidding. Sure, that'll get everyone's attention, but they'll just be shocked. 
No one's gonna laugh at your joke. It's not a joke, so they don't need to laugh. Surely they'll be surprised, but they'll understand knowing you. Serious? How can I joke about something like this? You're right. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. This will not happen again, yeah? Forgive me. I was just drunk, you know? Today was an important day. I told you many times. I feel bad. I apologized. And we've met your parents, so it's not easy now to break the engagement. It would be so embarrassing. Keep your temper. Right, Rihanna? I can't. I've tolerated you enough. You've abused me mentally. You've cheated on me many times. And every time I thought of breaking up with you, but then you apologized to me, crying, and so I'd forgive you. But I'll stop it now. I was not good forgiving you. So I'll bear some shame in that. But I've made up my mind. I can't stay with you. This is over. Even if I apologize this much? Yes. I can't do this. Oh my god. Enough. Don't get cocky. I'm apologizing and you crossed the line. A family gathering like that is just an informal thing for old geezers. Why do I even have to go to such a thing anyways? I get nervous, it's tiring, and I have to fake smile. I don't want to go, you can imagine. For you, it's your family, but for me, these guys are nobody. Your family is nothing to me. Can't you see? You could have been thoughtful for things like this. I attended all your family's gatherings, all of them, and I never complained, and I was never late. A am I wrong? They are no one to me, but I faked my smile to act like your ideal wife. It's a woman's job to give the man what he wants. That's your purpose, right? What? Are you being serious? Women around me all behave this way. Only you have ever complained about it. Grow up already. I knew it. I can't marry you. Fine. I'll easily find someone to replace you. Don't worry. You'll regret this stupid decision. Breaking up with me after I got promoted. Don't come crawling back to me when I'm rich. Getting even further promoted. Don't stalk me or threaten me to start over with you. I won't be able to deal with it. When I'm famous, everyone will be watching. So you won't be able to do a thing. Bye-bye. One week later. Rihanna, it's been a while. It's me. Can we talk? Well, I hurt you very much, and I'm sorry about it. I truly am sorry. So, can we get back together? Please? You're all that I have. I realized. Please, Rihanna, reply to me. What? We broke up. Broken engagement, you know what that means. It's too late to apologize. Now back off. Besides, I thought you wouldn't want to get back with me. I'm so sorry. I had no idea that you were the niece of the CEO. Yeah? CEO announced my demotion today, and I'll be sent to a remote office. And? Uh, I asked for a reason. And he told me that you're his niece, and I said something bad to you. Well, it's true, isn't it? And I've told you many times my uncle, who was very important, was coming. So you'd better be there. And still, you chose not to come. Why didn't you tell me that the CEO is your uncle? If I knew, I wouldn't have gone out for a single drink. I would have attended. I'd be there, no matter what. Bullshit! If you knew I was related to the CEO, you wouldn't go drinking? You'd attend the gathering? Of course. Of course I put you at the top of the list if I knew. How could you not tell me? Well, my uncle and aunt have no children. They couldn't have one. But they liked taking care of kids. After I was born, 
they've treated me like their own child. They were there for me during everything, and they didn't miss to celebrate any occasion, even though they were busy. So, when my uncle found out that I was getting married with one of his employees, he was happy, and he promoted you. I didn't know. I thought this was on my results. My uncle likes surprising people. He told me not to tell you because he wanted to surprise you at the gathering. That's why I didn't tell you. Oh boy. But you didn't show up at the gathering, of course. I told everyone the reason why. You! How could you? I told them about the engagement, about the mental abuses, and about cheating, all of them. And they listened to me. I could barely breathe, I was so emotional at the end. But everyone stayed on my side. Of course, my uncle too. He was very mad and said that he was ashamed that he appointed you to take a lead. He regretted promoting you. And then I showed all of our texts, crying. What? All of them? Yes, I did. All of them. Then my uncle was getting ready to punish you. Send you to work on a remote island. No way. Rihanna, please, I'll change. You'll change? Why? Why? Because I want to start over with you. I'm asking. It was my fault that I ignored you and went for drinks. You have nothing to be blamed for. Okay, and? What do you want me to do? Can you call your uncle and tell him that I'll be different and that I'll take care of you, and that I should keep my promotion because we're getting back together. Please, I still love you. It's true. Believe me. So, please ask him not to punish me. That's what you want. You don't care about my feelings. No, that's not true. I love you. You wouldn't be able to get a promotion without me. How funny. I'm begging. I'll change. If you want, I'll kneel down to apologize. Please, come back to me. I could do this for you. From now on, it'll be different and you'll be my top priority. And I'll listen to you alone. Please. Be different, you say? But can you really be so different from now on? That's really something. That you can be so different this easily. Maybe you don't remember all the other times that you said that you'd be different and failed. Since you're different now. Rihanna, I am not bullshitting you. My life depends on this. Help me. You know you love me. Come on. Love? No. I don't love you. I've had enough. Really. Why did I even get engaged to someone like you? I regret it. So it's over between us. I won't be talking with my uncle to help you. Never. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'll find a better girl on that island. Rihanna, no kidding. Hey, don't dump me, please. And I'll sue you, okay? What? Sue me? You betrayed me multiple times. Mental abuse and cheating. I kept all the evidence for this. So I'll demand compensation. Pay with no delay, got it? Wait, Rihanna, I really love you. Please, give me another chance. Don't worry. You can find another girl in no time, you said. Let's hope you can find one on your very own private island. Bye. Thereafter. After that, Joyce was sent to an office on an island where very few people live. He felt disappointed and got further addicted to drinking. After Joyce was sent away, the friends who used to drink with him didn't follow him to the new location. So, he's drinking alone at the end. It's a small office on the remote island, but it's still a part of my uncle's company. If business isn't good, or someone complains about him, even more severe punishment is waiting for him. Thus, Joyce always needs to give the best of himself. No time for these little relaxing drinking parties. And me, after our breakup, I started to date with a kind gentleman whom I was introduced to by my uncle. 
He is totally different from Joyce. He keeps his promises, hates alcohol, and has no interest in promotion. He joined the company to give himself a challenge. People respect him a lot. I suggested to him to go out with his colleagues several times to drink and mingle, but he says he likes it better at home. And he rarely does go out. But then, when I tell him about restaurants I see on TV, he'll take me there. Like this, I'm finally living happily with someone who cares about me a lot. Hey Ron, did you finish your work? I've just got a craving for something sweet. I want you to buy something for me at the dessert store near your office. I've heard the pudding at that store is delectable. So, can you buy me one? Hi, Elena. I want to buy one for you, but I've already finished my work for today and just got on the train. Sorry, but can I buy it tomorrow? Or if you're fine with the one from the nearby supermarket on my way home, I'll buy that. I just want the pudding from that dessert store. I want it not tomorrow, but today. Well, Alina, I said I've already got on the train today. It's already left the station. Then change trains to buy one, because you can get on trains anytime. So isn't it easy for you to just go back and get one? Even if you go back to the store, you can return home today. Sorry, Alina. I've been busy with work lately and been late getting home, so I'm tired now. Today I was finally able to leave the office on time, so I want to go home earlier to relax. Please. What are you saying? Tired from work? Isn't working hard enough to get tired one of the roles as a husband? Don't say you want to relax at home earlier like a baby. A husband is always supposed to work hard, but you can't do the smallest thing like buying a pudding just because you're tired. What are you? Do you really have the right to be my husband? It's a bit too harsh, I guess. Indeed, working hard is important, but sometimes I just want to relax. And you said it was one of the roles of a husband, but Alina, do you actually play the roles of a housewife? You always dress up and never clean up or do the laundry, let alone cooking, and never do anything a housewife is supposed to do. I always do those chores by myself after coming back from work, or I spend an entire weekend to do them. You too can't do what you're supposed to do. Ron, what? Haven't you promised me that you'd cherish me before getting married? Instead, now you're too lame and not able to buy me a pudding and even blame me. I'll break up with you. I never thought you'd be so terrible. I'll divorce you already. Hey, calm down, Alina. Perhaps I said too much, but cherishing you doesn't mean spoiling you. Cool your thoughts a little. I'm keeping calm. Okay then, if you buy me the pudding I asked you to buy first, I'll forgive you. If you don't, I'll have dinner with my friends this evening. I told you that I couldn't. I'll get to the nearest station from home soon. I can't buy it today no matter how hard I try. Alright then. Then I'm going to go to the fancy restaurant to have dinner with my friends. Cause I don't want to see your face and it'll be refreshing. Too bad your dinner is not ready, Ron. Go to some supermarket and buy one yourself. And don't forget to take care of Galvez. Haven't you fed the dog? He must be starving now. Can you leave home at least after feeding him? No. I have to leave home now. I'll leave everything to you. I'll not be able to reply to you for a while. <sighs> I see. Late at night. Alina, are you coming home early tomorrow morning again? You keep coming home early in the morning every day for about a year now, while we spend every day together when we just got married. Aren't you the one that doesn't do what a wife should do after all? What? Are you complaining about me? Besides, are you still talking about a wife's role or something? Seems like you still can't keep your promise to cherish me. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go travel with my friends for about a week. Travel? For a week? I didn't know that. Of course you didn't. I never told you about it. You can just feel lonely here without me while I'm on the trip. And regret deeply. If you change your attitude, I will travel with you next time, Ron. As long as you pay for everything. Got it. You'll keep this sort of attitude, won't you? Anyway, I have to leave for work in the morning, so make sure to lock the door when you leave for the trip. You have that kind of attitude too. Just change it while I'm out. Otherwise, I'll really get a divorce from you. One week later. Ron, are you starting to miss me now? I have something to tell you. A really wonderful thing. 
Will you finish the trip soon, Alina? What kind of thing do you want to tell me from this destination? You'll be surprised for sure. Actually, I... Got a baby in my belly! While I was traveling around, I felt sick, so I couldn't help with going to the local hospital and found out that I was pregnant! Are you pregnant? Alina, is it really true? I can't believe it. It's true! Can I send you a pic of the test result? Anyway, you're now my husband and this baby's father, so I want you to take responsibility as a father. It'll be physically harder for me as a mother, and I have to take care of the baby after it's born, so you should take good care of me then. Sorry to interrupt the happy news, Alina, but I think we've not done the thing for a year or more. Then how come you got pregnant? I don't remember when I did that with you. Of course you don't, Ron. You were terribly drunk on the night we made this baby. I never drink alcohol. My parents can't drink and neither can I. Don't you know that? So I've never been willing to drink, let alone getting terribly drunk. Didn't you get drunk because you were not used to it? I don't know what exactly happened, but you were already drunk when you came home. I thought you had a drink with your colleagues. No, no way. My colleagues never press alcohol on me, because they know I can't drink. And first of all, I've been too busy to go to any restaurant with them. This may hurt you, but I have to ask, Alina. Is the baby really mine? It's so terrible, Ron. I thought for sure you'd be happy. You don't sound happy and even ask me if it's your baby? Of course it is. What do you think I am? Do you think I'm so easy to have a relationship to another guy even though I'm married with you? Calm down, Alina. I just don't remember it. I'm already fed up with it. Do you feel so suspicious of me that you're fine with getting divorced? I need no husband nor father so skeptical about his wife. It's bad for our kid. Alina, I've been thinking about the same thing for the past year. Eh? What do you mean? Let's divorce, Alina. We just don't get along well. Huh? What are you going to do all of a sudden? You said we'd get a divorce too, right? I was just joking. I just want you to change your attitude, so... But you said you'd been thinking about it? What does it mean? Besides, how dare you say that just after I told you about the baby? Are you serious? I'm already tired of your selfish attitude, and I'm not sure the baby's mine. No, it can't be mine. I think that is a good enough reason to get a divorce. I said it's yours. You don't believe your wife's words and ask for a divorce? Don't you feel responsibility as a husband and father, or even as a man? Are you going to abandon me and my kid? Sorry, but I can't believe your words. Whatever you say, I won't change my mind. Anyway, I'll be back home soon. I can be back in two to three hours. Talk more about it in person. If you insist to get a divorce even after that, you shall pay much for my damage. Of course, you'll also pay money to support the baby if it's born. Take your time to think about it before I'm back. One hour later. Hey, Ron, what's this? Why aren't you in our apartment? You, your things, and even Galvis is not here. What are you going to do? I don't have anything to talk with you about. I just left. You've left a pregnant wife alone? What kind of punishment is this? Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, but this isn't a normal thing for a human to do. You're the worst kind of jerk, Ron. I'm disappointed. Who's the worst jerk, Alina? No one but you betrayed me first. Huh? What are you talking about? Stop saying weird things. And anyway, come back home immediately. I've already checked to find out you had dinner at the fancy restaurant the other day and went to travel that time with a college student you're having an affair with. Don't say such a weird thing. Please listen to me and come back home already. I don't even know any college students. Have you forgot about the pet camera for Galvis? Who we got because you wanted to have him so much? Everything was on camera the moment you invited the guy to our home. In the scene, you were talking with him happily. Of course, more intimate things too. Huh? Pet camera? When did you get it? I'm so upset you've put such a thing at home without asking me about it. Did you install it to watch me instead of Galvez? Such sneaky recordings will make for no evidence. I can sue you for secret recordings instead. You may have forgotten this, but do you remember the day Galvez got seriously ill suddenly? What does it have to do with this? Do you mean you've installed it because you were worried about Galvez? We don't need a pet camera as I stay home with them. Even if you want one, you should have asked your wife. 
You really have a selective memory, Alina. You didn't notice his illness as you were hanging out. I noticed it after being back home and took him to the hospital. Thanks to that, Galvis is now fine and alive, but don't you remember we had an argument back then? I told you to take care of him. Oh, I just remembered it. But I just happened to go out that day. What does it have to do with the pet camera? You said it yourself, but don't you remember yet? While you were arguing with me, you told me that I should install a pet camera if I'm so worried about Galvis. As long as I take the responsibility to take care of him. You said that first. I didn't install it without your permission. Did I? I don't remember it. You did. You said that we should install a pet camera first. I never imagined that it would record proofs of your affair. It... it can't be. At first I tried to turn a blind eye to it, and told myself that you just lost yourself for a while. But your attitude with me got worse and worse, while you and the guy on the pet camera looked so happy and getting along well. I couldn't stand that. I... I didn't mean to. I actually lost myself then, as you said. I missed you and it hurt me. Alright then. I have other evidence besides the pet camera, which proves you're so crazy about the student more than you told me. What do you mean? I hired a detective to investigate my wife's affair. Then I got quite a few proofs that prove you clearly have an affair with the student. Oh my! I'm shocked to hear that you hired a detective! You have only yourself to blame. I've gathered enough evidence so I've been able to do anything if I've made my mind up. I had to choose between talking with you to get back together or getting a divorce. Then talk with me! No, I can't. You made a baby with a student and asked me to raise it as my kid. I have no confidence in getting along with you and I can't do so anymore. No way! By the way, of course I'm getting a divorce from you and asking for you to pay damage. No! I don't want to do it! I apologize to you, so don't bring up a divorce! I was just missing you! Even if you miss me, how do you think you're allowed to cheat on me? It doesn't make sense, does it? Ron, if you can be a little more kind to me than before, I'll never cheat on you anymore. Please, let's talk together. If you can be kind to me, I can get along with you again. In this apartment, let's live happily together with me and our baby. Are you asking me to live with a cheater and another guy's kid? I can't do such a thing. Oh, and I forgot to tell you this, but... What? I've already cancelled the apartment lease. You can stay there tonight, but better to leave tomorrow. Cancelled? Why did you do it? Why? Cuz, I was the contractor and I have no reason to live there after getting divorced. It's disgusting to live in the room my wife used for infidelity. You're not staying calm now, Ron. Are you moving out of our apartment? You're insane! Alina, you're truly insane. Anyway, I'll go back to my parents' house today, so we can rest well tonight, then talk together again. I think you can't go back to your parents' house. Why? I talked to your parents about you and brought them evidence of the affair. I told them about the divorce and they agreed with it. Your mother was crying while apologizing, as she said that she felt sorry for me because of her stupid daughter. Your father was so upset that he said he'd cut ties with such a foolish daughter. So I guess you can't be allowed to stay at your parents' house. N no way! You even convinced my dad and mom? I'm really shocked to hear that! Actually, you've always shocked me with your behavior. What do you think I should do from now on? Don't ask me. Anyway, your parents will get a comment certified mail from the lawyer a few days later, so at least visit them to get it. I'll tell your parents to hand it to you. A content certified mail? For documents and compensation. Read it carefully and pay accordingly. I can pay no compensation, because I'm just a housewife. I don't have much money, as you know. I don't have it, so I can't pay it. I've been depending on your salary. Then work for yourself. You can divide the payment as I'll wait for you to get it fully paid. You're no longer a housewife, but a single woman, so you can work freely, can't you? I've not worked before, and I'm pregnant. Are you telling me to work with a baby in my belly? Besides, where should I and the baby live from now on? It's more important than work. How about finding a workplace and applying again for the apartment lease? Or you can live with a student. You can live in his apartment and split the rent. Even a pregnant woman has many options for a workplace. As I just told you, I've never worked before. I can't start working anytime soon. Besides, he's still a college student. He still lives with his parents and is not working even as a part-timer. 
It's impossible for us to pay rent, living expenses, and compensation. You have only yourself to blame, Alina. As you said to me, if you took better care of me, this wouldn't have happened. Don't you feel sorry for me and the baby? This baby is really not the student's, but it's actually yours. You bastard. It's no use lying anymore, Alina. I can't believe your words nor behaviors. If you got more to tell me, get a DNA test of the baby and hire a lawyer. Wait, Ron. I have something more to tell you. Come on, reply to me. Thereafter. After that, I got a successful divorce from Alina. Of course, later the documents clearly proved that the baby was not mine, but the college students. Alina asked her cheating partner to marry her to pay me the damages and expenses for their newborn baby. But he was just a student who did not want serious relationships, so he refused her because he was looking for a girlfriend who was closer in age. Even after that, Alina constantly asked him to marry her. Finally, he told her that he was fed up with her and they ended up in a breakup. Alina even asked her parents for help, but they refused to help her because they'd already cut ties with her. In such a situation, she texted me and told me that I was the only one she and her baby could rely on, and she asked me for an exemption from compensation, as well as paying expenses for her kid. While I was amused by her boldness, I blocked Alina's account to break off with her. According to one of our common friends, she was not aware that I blocked her, and she's sending one-way messages asking me for exemption, baby's expenses, and getting back together. Those can no longer reach me, and they're none of my business. By the way, I've moved to a new place she doesn't know and live here with my dog Galvis. Thinking about Galvis, the fact that Alina asked me to install the pet camera is the only thing I feel grateful for her, I guess. Now I live alone, so I need it in case something happens to Galvis. Hey, Auntie! Who are you? It's rude to message someone out of the blue and call them Auntie. Who are you, anyway? Auntie? You must be around 35 years old, right? Yes, that's right. So what? More importantly, who are you? How do you even know my age? Auntie, you're 35 and don't have any children, right? That's none of your business. Come on, tell me who you are already. You seem like a pitiful auntie. What do you mean by pitiful? What's going on? Just tell me who you are. Come on, tell me your name already. I'm Carolina. Who? I don't know anyone named Carolina. I'm a medical student at K University. Oh, I see. You're in medical school. But I don't know you. Yeah, you wouldn't know me. Who are you? How do you know me? It's natural that you don't know me. Why did you contact me? Do you really want to know? Do you have something to tell me? Actually, there is something I want to tell you. Something you want to tell me? What is it? Your husband Kit and I are in a relationship. What do you mean? You're in a relationship with my husband? I don't understand what you're saying at all. I'm telling you that I'm in a relationship with your husband. Wait a minute. Are you saying that you're aware that Kit is my husband and you're still in a relationship with him? Yes, that's what I'm saying. And of course, I know everything about Kit. Do you understand what that means? And on top of that, you went out of your way to contact me about it. Yes, I did. And I know everything about him. That's how close he and I are. So you're aware that you're cheating with my husband, right? Cheating? It's not cheating. We love each other purely. Don't say it like that. Even if you don't want to say it like that, it's still a fact, isn't it? Kit is my husband. It's cheating, isn't it? I don't know if it's cheating, but it's definitely an affair. Using the word cheating makes it sound dirty. Whether it's pure love or cheating or an affair, it doesn't matter. But you and Kit have that kind of deep relationship, right? That's what it seems like. <laughs> Sorry, Auntie. Is that all you have to say? A light apology for knowing that you're cheating? It's because I look down on you, so I can't help it. You have no right to look down on me. Do you know how low what you're doing is? Low? Why? Do you understand your position? Having a deep relationship with a married person is not pure love, don't you think? Don't you even understand that? You're saying that having a relationship with a married person is the lowest thing. I can't help it. 
it's not something that can be excused by saying, I can't help it. Do you have any awareness of that? What about being young? Just being young has value. Do you understand that? You don't have any awareness, so you contact me like this. Am I being made fun of? Or are you jealous? I'm not making fun of you, and I'm not jealous. I'm just disgusted. Is that so? You've been talking to me like you're so great since earlier. Are you aware that you're having an affair with a married man, having a deep relationship, and destroying his family? So what? It can't be helped. I'm more attractive as a woman and as a person than you, an old lady. Do you realize how much that diminishes your value as a person? Diminishes my value as a person? That's not true at all. Yes, it is. You'd see it if you thought about it calmly. It doesn't diminish my value as a person. We're just cultivating pure love. Is that so? You're just preoccupied with Kit and can't make a sound judgment anymore, aren't you? That's none of your business, old lady. Whether it's pure or not, it doesn't matter anymore. But you're calling me an old lady. But Kit is a 36-year-old man, isn't he? Don't compare Kit with an old lady like you. To someone in their 20s like you, 36 is an old man or an old lady, isn't it? Kit isn't an old man. What is that supposed to mean? You're just treating Kit differently from others. Kit is different. Age doesn't matter because he's cool. Besides, the value of age is entirely different between men and women. What exactly is the difference between us? Please tell me. I'm not a middle-aged woman who just gets older like you. He's becoming more and more handsome as he ages. I've never felt like he's an old man. What is that supposed to mean? You're jealous of the relationship between Kit and me, aren't you? I'm not jealous. I'm just disgusted. That's a lie. You don't have to pretend to be strong. I'm not pretending to be strong. I'm really just disgusted with the relationship between you and him. Disgusted? You don't need to make excuses like that. Middle-aged women can only be jealous, right? You're really a pitiful middle-aged woman. I don't care if I'm pitiful middle-aged woman or whatever. You can say whatever you want. Do you know what Kit is saying to me? I don't know. There's no way I would know that. Kit, who is a doctor with an annual income of 20000 is saying he wants to marry me. Is that a lie? Kit said that to a young girl like you? What is Kit saying? I can't believe it. I'm so disgusted. I can't even speak. I'm not just a young girl. I'm already an adult. If you're already an adult, then you should really think about what you're doing. You're not my parent, so you don't need to say that to me. And there's no need for you to worry about that either. What do you mean there's no need to worry about it? Well, if Kit's father is a doctor with his own practice, you know, if we get married, Kit will be the successor to the clinic and our future will be secure. Are you sure about that? Even if you become an old lady like me, you might still be cheated on, you know? That's only for old ladies. Don't make me laugh. And that big house behind the clinic? That's his house, right? Yes, but how did you find out about it? Where did you get this information? I know everything about him, remember? Besides, it doesn't matter where the information came from, does it? Yeah, I guess not, but I was just curious. If you really want to know, I can tell you. No. It's okay. It was from my grandfather. Your grandfather? Yes! Apparently my grandfather knew the former head of the clinic and he told me a little bit about it. I see. Also, my grandfather told me to go to medical school. Really? So you didn't go to medical school by choice? Well, yeah, something like that. Your grandfather wants you to become a doctor. I just happened to have a good head and got into medical school. I'm not trying to praise you or anything, but there are people who want to become doctors, but can't get into medical school. It's amazing. Why don't you take more pride in yourself? Why should I? I'm not particularly interested in becoming a doctor. Besides, studying is a hassle, and honestly, I don't want to study anymore. So you're just smart, that's all. What do you mean, just? Anyway, let's get back to the point. When I was thinking that studying was a hassle and I didn't want to do it anymore, I met him. Oh, really? That's interesting. At a mixer that I just happened to attend, a handsome doctor named Kit with an annual income of 20000 showed up. Wait a minute, you met Kit at a mixer? Yes, he was there at the mixer. Kit, he's really the worst. That's not true. When I talked to him, he was interesting, handsome, older, and very charming. 
Was it because you heard about his income and that he was a doctor? It's not that simple. When I was talking to him, it turned out that he was the son of the director who my grandfather was indebted to, and I felt a sense of destiny with Kit. Even though Kit is married, he still goes to group dates. But Carolina, aren't you crazy to feel destiny with a stranger you just met at a group date? That's why you'll be dumped for making such a fuss over such a small matter, old lady. What's with that tone of yours? Are you okay? It's natural for old people to have a rigid mindset. You say that I'm making a fuss over a small matter, but is what you're doing a small matter? I don't think so. Anyway, break up with Kit as soon as possible. First, you suddenly contact me, and now you're telling me to break up? We truly love each other. Yeah, sure. Purely. You're the one who's getting in our way. You're so rude. Who's the one causing trouble here? Is that so? I'm just expressing my opinion. Besides, you must be thinking that I'm the one who ruined your relationship with him. But he chose me, so it can't be helped. I'm really annoyed with you too. But I'm also very angry with Kit for attending matchmaking parties without regard for his position and even getting involved with a female college student. I don't care how you feel or how frustrated you are right now. That's right. Anyway, I want him to break up with you as soon as possible. It's not just my problem, so even if you ask me to break up with him right away, I can't give you an answer right away. I want to be with Kit as soon as possible. I understand, so I will contact you later about the divorce. Really? Will you divorce him for me? Anyway, let me talk to Kit first. I didn't know he had such a deep relationship with you. I understand, so I'll wait for your divorce notice, please. Just before that, one piece of advice for you. Advice? What is it? You said you know everything about Kit, but do you really? What do you mean? You should know more about Kit. It's better to understand him. I know enough about him. Such advice is not necessary for me, Auntie. Is that so? Otherwise, your life will end up in ruin. What's that? You're really pathetic, Auntie. Are you threatening me? It's useless. I gave you advice. That's all. Okay, I understand. Anyway... I want to be with him as soon as possible, so I'll wait for the divorce notice. After half a year. Long time no talk. Sorry for getting back to you so late. Auntie, what? Did you get divorced? We finally got divorced. Did you really get divorced? I was waiting for that news. Oh, I see. As you wished. Kit and I got divorced. Finally divorced! Why did it take so long to get divorced? I've been asking you to get divorced quickly. Do you think it's easy to get a divorce? It's not just dating. It's more complicated when you're married. Here comes your preaching again. You're such a rude child. It's not about dating. Divorce involves families too, which is why it took so long. Are you saying that it's Kit's family? Are you trying to blame it on Kit? It's not like that. Weren't you the one that didn't want to divorce him? Isn't that why it took so long? Even if I say we're different, you only care about him and don't listen to me, right? That might be true. Anyway, getting married or getting divorced is different from when you're just dating like lovers. When you get married, it's not just you and him. It's complicated because the other family members are involved too. Are you making excuses? You're really good at sour grapes. It's obvious. Is that so? I'm finally divorced and feeling refreshed. I don't think so. I thought it was just an excuse from an older woman. Anyway, you're divorced now, so don't stick around Kit. That's my line. I'm not going to cling to Kit. Besides, I even reported the divorce to you. Are you satisfied? Yes! So don't cling to me either. I'm not going to cling to you. Don't cling to me either, old lady. Of course not. If Kit pays you money, it will all be over. That's right. So from now on, don't have anything to do with him. Promise me. That's what I want to say. I hope Kit will leave cleanly like this. What are you talking about? You're the one who got dumped. You're a strange person. Well, anyway, I've reported the divorce, so I have no use for you anymore, right? That's right, old lady. I wish you happiness in the future. Goodbye. Some days later. Hey, auntie. Auntie, again? What's up? I already told you about the divorce. I don't see what else you could want from me. I have something else to talk to you about. What now? When are you going to move out of that house? That house? Do you mean the one behind the clinic? Yes! When are you going to move out? 
You're divorced from him now, so why don't you just leave already? I'm planning to move into an apartment near my university at the end of this month. So, Auntie, when are you going to move out? You're asking me out of nowhere. You're so close to your university, it's a waste to move out. What are you talking about? I want to become a glamorous housewife as the future wife of the next clinic director, even if I have to move today. What is that? You're ridiculous. If you want to marry Kit, it's up to you, but shouldn't you graduate from college first? You always say things like my mother, auntie. I have more life experience than you, so I want to tell you many things. It has nothing to do with your life. You're divorced, so get out of here, old lady. What about college? I don't care about college. It's none of your business. It doesn't concern you, right? It may not concern me, but you say you want to be a housewife, but are you giving up on becoming a doctor? I never really wanted to be a doctor in the first place. I just wanted to marry Kit and have a luxurious life. Oh, I see, but becoming a doctor yourself would make you even more of a celebrity, don't you think? I don't want to study anymore, and I don't intend to become a doctor. So you're planning to marry him without even graduating from college? That's right. So actually, I've already dropped out of college by myself. Are you kidding me? I can't believe it. You're almost done with university, aren't you? Don't you think all your previous studies would go to waste if you quit now? But I have Kit! That may be so, but... Kit is a doctor with an annual income of 200000 and if we get married, we'll be set for life. I don't mind being unemployed, so I've dropped out of university already. I understand your determination to be with him, but... My preparations are going smoothly. Are you sure you're okay? What do you mean? Are you really going down on a path of self-destruction while misunderstanding everything? What do you mean by that? Is everything okay with your head? I'm gonna marry Kit and be happy from now on. I wonder if you'll really be happy. What's the misunderstanding? That's not your own life, it's mine. I'm not sure about that. What are you trying to say? There's nothing for you to worry about. Do you really know everything about him? That's why I'm saying this. Anyway, can you start preparing to leave the house soon, Auntie? Um... What? Do you have something else to say? Why do I have to leave my parents' house? Huh? What are you talking about? That house is not your parents' house, right? That house is my parents' house. That was before the divorce. It's not your house anymore. It was Kit's family house to begin with. Please start preparing to leave soon. You really don't know anything. What do you mean? This house is my parents' house. You still don't understand? Huh? Are you kidding me? The house is your parents' house? Yes. Not Kit's family's house? No, I said it's my parents' house, so I have no intention of leaving this house. Huh, what do you mean? It's your parents' house? How did this happen? What's going on? Are you in contact with Kit? Haven't you heard anything from him? I've been busy lately, so he hasn't been in touch much. What do you mean, I haven't I heard anything? That's right. What do you mean, that's right? I think Kit is busy now, so let me explain instead. What's going on? I don't understand. I'm sure he hasn't told you the whole truth, so please calm down and listen. What are you even talking about? Actually, even after the divorce, Kit was asking me to get back together with him. Get back together? Kit, that can't be true. It's a lie. But I don't want to get back together with him. And he finally realized that it's impossible. What are you talking about? Are you making things up? No, I'm not. Please listen to me first. All right, fine. And then he was forced to return to the countryside. What do you mean? Why? I don't understand. That's why I think he's having a really busy day right now. Why the countryside? What do you mean by forced to return? I can't understand the situation at all. Explain it properly. He was forcibly returned to his hometown, which is his family's home in the countryside. Huh? His family's home is in the countryside? So that means that house isn't actually his? Exactly. That's what it means. Why was he forced to return? When will he come back? I don't know when he'll come back. You should ask him. But he's a doctor. Doesn't he have a job as a doctor? Then why does he need to go to the countryside? That's not the point. I'm the doctor. Kit is not a doctor or anything. What are you talking about? Kit is a doctor, isn't he? That's a lie. The one with the annual income of 200000 is me. Huh? Not Kit? No. That's all Kit's made-up story and lies. What? All that is a lie? That's impossible. I am the doctor with the 200000 annual income, not Kit. 
That's... that can't be right. Kit wouldn't tell such lies, and that house is his family home. How long are you going to believe what he says? This house is my family home. The clinic behind the house is run by my father, and I am the next director, not Kit. That's... then what does he do if Kit's not a doctor? Kit is unemployed. He doesn't work. Is that a lie? He's unemployed. It's not a lie. Kit was running a factory with his parents. However, the factory went bankrupt six months after we got married. Since then, Kit has been unemployed under the guise of job hunting. Is that a lie? That's impossible. Such a lie. And on top of that, he's not working? He used to complain at home that job hunting wasn't going well. But in reality, he was living a life of partying and going to mixers. What is that? That's not the kid I know. I know, right? But an unemployed man wouldn't be popular at mixers, would he? Yeah, you're right. That's why he used my status. I didn't feel like he was making up stories, though. Maybe that's true. Maybe because he's seen me working as a doctor up close, it felt authentic. But he's not a doctor. There's no way he makes 200000 a year. This is just unbelievable. What am I supposed to do? Even if you ask me how I'm supposed to handle this, I don't know what to tell you. I just told you the truth. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Kit has already confessed to you. Confessed what? That he enjoyed playing with girls who were attracted to the status of a high-income doctor, and Caroline was one of them. What? You're saying that I was just a fling to him? What is that? How could he do this to me? I think he's busy now, but it would be good if you could talk to him and sort things out. I was seriously considering marrying Kit. When he begged for forgiveness and didn't want a divorce, he confessed everything. I don't want to hear that. In the end, I couldn't forgive him, and we got divorced, remember? Now he's back in the countryside, working multiple jobs with his parents to pay off a large debt. That's impossible! I can't believe he lied to me like this, but I guess this is the truth. Yes, actually, I felt sorry for Kit and his parents. My father and I were going to partly help pay off their debt out of kindness, but when your affair with Kit came to light, it destroyed our relationship and family, and the idea of helping with the debt disappeared. I never thought it would come to this. Yeah, he only told you lies. Kit's parents were shaken when they heard that the debt repayment plan was off the table. Yeah, that makes sense. And Kit came with tears, apologizing and begging not to divorce him. He kept saying it over and over again, but I couldn't forgive what you and he did. I don't believe that story. You just made it up, didn't you? I understand that you don't want to believe it, but it's the truth. But you're already divorced, right? You're just trying to separate me from him now. That's not true, and I don't want to break you two up. It's impossible for Kit not to be a doctor. If you insist, why don't you ask your grandfather? Yeah, I'm sure my grandfather knows. Yeah, maybe he remembers when I was a child. It's only a matter of time before your grandfather hears about what you've done, right? That's... How do you think your grandfather would feel about his grandchild committing an act of theft? What do you want to achieve by blaming me like this? Also, didn't you go to medical school on the orders of your grandfather? And yet, if he found out that you quit, what do you think he would say? It's none of your business! Don't you think there will be consequences for dropping out of school? Stop saying whatever you want. I'll prove that you're lying. One month later. Um, so you're not going to contact me anymore, Auntie? Well, actually, I have a request. A request? What is it? Actually, I've run out of money, and I have nowhere to stay anymore. So that's why you contacted me? I just need a little bit of money. Please? What are you saying now? I don't have any obligation to lend you money. Please, can you just help me out a little bit? If you need to rely on someone, why don't you rely on Kit, your true love, who you love so much? Kit is not an option anymore. Really? Weren't you supposed to get married? I still can't get in touch with him. I see. So why are you contacting me? What nerve do you have to do with that? I had a serious talk with my grandfather. Well, I already know that Kit is not a doctor, and that he lied. Finally, you understand that what I've been saying is all true. Yeah, so I'm done with him now. So that means that you talk to your grandfather and your parents about it, right? Yeah. Well then, why don't you just go back home? My whole family is really angry with me for what I did this time. I can imagine. But that doesn't mean you should rely on me. But I'm too scared to contact my parents. I definitely can't go back home. But if you have no money... What other choice do you have but to go back? I don't even know how to face them. But you were the one who messed up, right? Yeah, but... Well, it's better than just getting punished for it, isn't it? I just hate being scolded. 
I'm not asking anything in particular from you this time. It's good that it ended without any serious consequences. You should think seriously about how grave of a sin it is to break up a family and reflect on it. Explain it properly to your parents and go back home. I don't want to, because if I explain it to my father, he'll definitely get angry. You did something like that, so you'll have to tell your father everything and reflect on it at home. I don't want to! Even if you say that, I have no intention of lending you any money. Fine then, how about this? I'll return Kit to you, so even though you got divorced and Kit and you will get remarried and everything, it will be back to how it was before. That way, it'll be like nothing ever happened, right? Do you even understand what you're saying? You can't just pretend like nothing happened now. Please! So please tell my parents that I'm not angry anymore and forgive me. Please, pretty please. Why should I do something for you? Because I'm being scolded for having an affair. What do you think would happen if they found out that I dropped out of school too? Haven't you told your parents about that yet? I'm scared to tell them. You're always relying on others. But everything you've done is your fault. Reflect on yourself properly. You're the one who did something that will make them angry. Don't ask for any more help and figure it out on your own. Why did this have to happen to me? Also, you said you would return Kit, but I'll pass. I have no intention of getting back with Kit, and I don't want anything to do with someone who cheats. And finally, a word of advice, life is not easy. There are many things in life that won't work with such a sweet way of thinking like yours. Thereafter. It's such a waste that someone who could get into medical school would ruin their life like this. This incident made me think about the difference between being able to study and being smart. In the end, after running out of money, Carolina had no choice but to return to her parents' house. Of course, they were very angry about the affair, and it seems like Carolina was scolded severely to the point where her expulsion was revealed. University is a big turning point in life, and it's such a waste to ruin it for one man's sake. Parents can't stay quiet either, can they? Carolina was severely scolded by her parents and was mentally exhausted. She came to apologize with her grandfather in such a miserable state, looking much older than her 20s due to the stress. And then her grandfather said he would make her work at a civil engineering company in the remote mountains where there were only elderly people in order to make her reflect on her actions. If she had become a doctor, she might have been able to live a luxurious life without relying on a man. For her, a harsh workplace like a civil engineering company might be good for making her reflect on herself. There will likely be many men, and it may be perfect for Carolina, whose only asset is being young. As for me, I was able to separate from my cheating husband, and I don't have to worry about money. Meeting her made me realize that I should pursue what I want, and have a fulfilling life.